Good afternoon, good afternoon to all our viewers. I just want to welcome you to this afternoon. A little chat with the great man, Mr. Jerome Taylor. And together we rise, building our nation. You know, it's a privilege and a pleasure to be here with such a talented cricketer. A man who have played cricket to the highest level, represented the West Indies. A man who have started out from St. Elizabeth. Jerome Taylor, I want to welcome you. So together we rise, building our nation. Yes, yes, Tamo. Um, thanks for having me, man. It's a pleasure being here. All right, Mr. Taylor. So we're going to get kick it off right away. Um, first, we just want to start out with your community, where you're from, you know, your primary school, your early cricketing career. Um, well, um, um, I am currently, well, I am from, St. Elizabeth in the parish of um in the, in the community of Aberdeen. Um small town where I'm from, you know, and I'm um, grew up here, spent all of my life here, was born and raised here. So um for the thirty seven years that I've known myself, this is where I'm at. For that um I went to the Aberdeen primary school, primary and early school, which now turns into a high school. Yeah, my son. So that was that my cricket my cricketing career started there and from there it went on to St. Elizabeth Technical High School. And from that it leads to Jamaica under nineteen, from the under nineteen to the senior team and from the senior team to West Indies team. So that's basically how my cricketing career went from primary to the highest level. All right, Jerome. So we just want to take it back um, quickly to primary school, Aberdeen. At Aberdeen, yeah. did you have like a coach there you know, that was grooming you from early? Yeah, man. But if, if I should say the grooming started with my dad, to be honest, he was my first coach. You understand? And... Um, we moved from there in Aberdeen School. Yes, you have a coach by the name of Andre Powell. He was my coach. He's, I started with him. But I have another coach by the name of Colin Dunkley, who came in at a later stage before I left Aberdeen School. Okay, and you then went on to St. Elizabeth Technical High School. Could you tell us at what age? Um. I went to St. Elizabeth Technical at about, what year that was again? Probably about, about 12, 13, yeah. It was about 12, 13. All right, so around age 12, 13, went into St. Elizabeth Technical High School. So I know yeah. um, St. Elizabeth High School is one of the best cricketing schools in the island, in North Jamaica. Well, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is one of the best sporting schools in the island. I would just say cricket in school. <laughs> well, you got that right. So I just want the viewers to know, you know that's also my alma mater, St. Elizabeth Technical High School. And tonight we just want to give a big shout out to all the Stetsonians, you know, wherever you are, wherever you're watching from. We wish that you also share the broadcast that others could join in. You know, tonight, as we say, we have the great Mr. Jerome Taylor. We know he has represented West Indies to the fullest. You know, it's a, just a pleasure to have him here on the platform. So, Jerome, at St. Elizabeth Technical High School, when you got there, did you just go straight into, like, the under-16, under-15 program? Just tell us about the journey there at States. Well, yeah, when I, when I got to States, um, it was, it was under-16. Yeah, the, the under-16 program. And um, my coach at that point was um, Keith Wellington, who is now the president of not the president. Well, he's the president of, I think, of the JT. Not JT, no. But he is the principal of the school now. You understand? And I think he is the president of ISA, I think. Yes, I think so. He, he, he controls the ISA um, you know, athletics. I know it's right. very big with that. And, and, right. and I hold St. Elizabeth Technical High School, I should say, that they're doing like amazingly well in terms of athletics. I don't know if you yeah. know, but we... We sent about six students, past students from states, to the Olympics. 
it's you know just that two weeks ago i uh, basically interviewed one of them uh mort the man that yeah. deals from Nain. so saint elizabeth producing some very good athletes cricketers we know that 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 those you know are are, are just what we do at states there so yeah, yeah. what i want to well, I don't know from you know, Jerome. I know Saint Elizabeth Technical High School. You're from Aberdeen, so yeah. I know it may be a challenge. And what would be some of the challenge that you had? You know, you have to lift Aberdeen, get to states. You have to train all that. Just tell us a little about some of the early challenges that you had. Well, well, my early ch challenges um, starting out at states was was to get to school and from school, and um. Living in Aberdeen, um, it was one that was very challenging to get transport at that early time a morning to get up and to reach a school. So I had to leave Aberdeen and, and then I was settled in Tantan for a couple of years living with Demaya Simit, who was the track and field coach at States at the time. So yes, I had to live with Eldemaya Simit and Dana Simit in Tantan. So I used to get drive with them to school most morning. All right, you know, so as a state cricketer myself, I would have um, basically graduated St. Elizabeth Technical High School in 1996. I went back 97 just for cricket. At mm -hmm. that time, Ju Junior Bennett was our coach. And later on, I know Lazar came in. Um, did you go under any of these um, coaches while there? Well, Junior Bennett was a coach. Show all my cricketing career while I was there, and um and and it goes without any doubt saying that he is one of the best in, and I wouldn't just say Jamaica one of the best in the Caribbean. Yeah, understand. And when I say that, I say that without doubt nor fear. I I pass through his hands and his method of coaching. It it is one that you it it is the real can with. Definitely, I could I could say the same with you, Juna Bennett. You know, I one of the best by far in jamaica in the caribbean and you know somebody who, had, who i would have loved to see him get at least a chance with the west indies because we know he have caught so many of you guys you know in your time you know like man like you christopher yeah. henry gale you know darren powell you know just even from saint elizabeth technical high school you would have had teammates like nikita miller brenton parchment and even darren powell yeah, you know? Finley. a couple of us a couple of us a couple of us you know yeah, I, I think you guys had a very good bunch when you were in States because even um, Miller, you know. That, so if you could probably name out some of those top cricketers that you played along with while at St. Elizabeth Technical High School, just for the viewers. Yeah, well, well, yeah, when I, when I first started, um, Brenton was the captain, but he used to be in and out playing national cricket. So whenever he's not there, Nikita Miller would take over from him. So I played along with him, Mel Wint, um, Sean Finley, Howard Powell, and uh, a couple others to go along, you know. And I even played along with Kamal Dennis as well, one, one, a one that you would think that would have gone on to reach the highest level. You know, he was he was a bunch of talent, to be honest with you, and um, we would term that as an underachiever. I am not sure if it, if it is any fault of his or whatever the case may be, but trust me, he was one of, I would say, one of the most raw talent to have ever come to yeah I, I would join you on that with Kamal Dennis and I'm going to tell you a story about Kamal Dennis you know, not many people know this but when Kamal Dennis started cricket at States you know I remember he started under 16 by JB they're just going up to Manu and they needed an extra play and they saw him out in this you know, street getting heading to States and they said can you play cricket and they just take him to Manu and he got about six wickets, I believe. At yeah. <laughs> well, 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 Talby, if I tell you this, you know, my story is a little bit similar to his. We want to hear it, man. Yeah, the first time when I went out to training and, and JB was there, and they asked for peace as I put up my hand. So when I put up my hand and then I started bowling, his his remark was, come here, let me turn you to a half spinner. So for the rest of that day, I don't bowl anybody because I have no intention of turning you to a half spinner. <laughs> Yo, yeah, yeah. Time, a small, slim, wiry frame. It was never a big, chapped in tall person. You know, I was very slim. Yeah, and that's one thing I know about you. You know, you you were you were thin bodied earlier, 
but later I yeah. see you, like, you went into the gym. But back to that Kamal Dennis situation, I'll tell you this. When I um went back to States, 1997, was just to mm -hmm. play cricket. And would you believe that one particular game, Drew, JB dropped me for this young man, Kamal Dennis. <laughs> And, and I gotta tell you this joke what happened. You know, you know, me and my wife been together for many years from States. And I remember vividly one afternoon, you know, while training going on, and that's why I like JB and his discipline. I was out on the bleacher with my wife, just chilling while everybody else was, you know, out on the cricket pitch already, already change off and everything. I'm still in my car with my girlfriend reasoning. All I, I know <laughs> is that. Juna Benny walk around, he makes sure I saw him. Walk around and he said, I talk yes. <laughs> yeah. And believe you me, the next day, a Saturday, we had cricket. And when I, I show up, I know something was going to go down. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, 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 and there it is on the paper. He said, okay, come on, Dennis in for you and Thomas. <laughs> oh. He said, he said yes. tell me when you're ready to play cricket. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he's like that. And, and, and let me tell you, um, the discipline that he instilled when, when, when we were going to school, um, it was very good because it, it took us a far way, to be honest with you. And the discipline in the cricket, it, 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 it spilled over in our, life, in our lives as well because I could remember a situation with, with Davy and Davidson as well. In the same time that he, he was a youth player and he came back from tour and we have training and, and all of these things and... Even we just walked down into the town with his girlfriend, put on him Jamaica tap on him, gone down in the town. So it had a situation where we were going to the States, the, the team was going to the States, and Junior didn't carry him as well, because Junior said, look, you're not ready for cricket. <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> I mean, I mean, he's a person that he, he I don't think he, he would have, he would have, he would have seen it in a way where, where me and you any bad, but it's just that he wanted to commit yourself to it and to be focused at the task at hand, you know what I mean? So, in a sense, sometimes you, you really have to, understand where he's coming from. It is tough love. You understand if one would say, I would, I would see it as tough love. He, he's a man that, you know, tried to always keep us on our P and our Q's like, like, like in school. You know what I mean? So he was a father figure for most of us at school. Not just cricket alone. When you don't play cricket, he would shut us down and he would give you a general talk about life in itself. Well, you're, you're right about that and just even bringing me back to that memory with um Davidson. Because we know he's a very good cricketer. Um, yes, similar situation I, I remember with like Fox and you know Garden, Sheldon Garden, and I think um Carl Wright and a few, about five of them went and represent the Jamaica under 19 team. And we were still yes. winning while they were away. When they came back, they thought they were this big star walking to school with them Jamaican bag and them blazers. <laughs> and to tell you that game, first game, none of them was in the team. And JB said, guess what? We're winning while you guys are away. Why don't you think we, we we can't win without you? And trust me, by the next week, everybody was back to basic. So that's the type of um coach that J Jonah Bennett is, you know. And I and I really respect him as a person in that he don't really separate, you know, that you're better than the other player. You're just a yeah. cricketer, just like the next person. And if you're not working for your um position or your game you're not gonna get a free pass you know well he's like that he, he's, he's someone who believes in the world because he used to, he used to even give us the story about the person with one talent and the person with multiple talents you know but after that the person with this one who worked the hardest he's the one that always get the farthest you understand you think you have so many talents and you just get like a basic and you just leave it as is but the person who just don't look this is what i do he must work twice as hard as the next man. He's the person that most often than not reach to the highest point. That's so true. And, you know, because we know we have some of our um, states only and going to be um, following the program. Mr. Richard Barrett, you just want to big up yourself. Um, I quickly want to ask you this question. You know, the type of student you, you were while at St. Elizabeth Technical High School and your best memory there, you know? Well, if it if it is about student in the school, um, I am one who will go down as one of the neatest, probably one of the neatest student. And um, I can, uh, if you ask JB, he can attest to that. And LD Mayasimi can attest to that as well, because at one point I was being mixed up 
with another person in the school and those two persons stood up for me and like no you can't say that about Jerome he's always clean you know what I mean just 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 one of those things but um I'm in school I was one who go and try to get stuff done you know what I mean we couldn't play cricket without we have a certain grades and all of these things so you have to make sure that you have all of these things up and ready before you can play cricket you know, because those are the requirements in school. You have to have certain subjects at a certain grade before you can get to play. So it's not about just coming into the school and then when it's cricket time, you're going to get to file. You have to deal with some of the books as well. So it, it, it was something that you have to try to balance while you were doing that. You know what? Before I get any further, I, I really want to tell you that, you know, I respect your father and I want you to give him a shout out for me because, you know, remember playing cricket back there at Appleton, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's also a, a very good disciplinarian you have in your life, you know. So, you know, I won't let, let you leave the program without just giving us a few words about your father and the type of person he is, you know. Well, let me tell you, um, he's he's a disciplinarian to be honest, and um, playing with him as a youth growing up, he, he prided himself on that, and he was a person who commits himself to the game as well, you know. Um, whether we are playing in the community or we're going out. Because he was the leader at the time when I started playing. He was the captain. He, he, he at some point, was very fearsome of me playing because I was too young, considered to be too young. So he, he, he didn't want to play. But it, it, it come to the time where he couldn't keep it any longer. He just had to throw me in the fire and said, all right, go ahead and do whatever, whatever you have to do. But to be honest, he was very supportive of me growing up and, and, and wanted to do cricket. He was, like I said, he's my first hero. You understand? I used to watch him play, and I just wanted, I, I actually wanted to be anything like him growing up. I even better than him. So that was the reason why I actually stick to cricket, no matter what. I was just cut for cricket, to be honest with you. All right. Uh, next thing, uh, I, I, all the audience here, I just wanted you guys to know straight up Jerome Taylor is ready, fit, and ready for cricket. So later on, we're going to touch into that part. But for right now, Jerome, we want to touch back at your first cap for Jamaica at the youth level. You know, when did you first represent Jamaica and for how long? At the youth well, level? Yeah, at the youth level. Let me tell you, it, it, it's like, I can remember it like yesterday. It was just my my time. Because um, when I started out, I didn't start in the first level. I was on the bench and... um. We play a game again. I think it was against Trinidad. Uh, somebody play against, and um, Joey and Robbins got injured. And when he got injured, we have like about three games left in the tournament. You understand? And even on the day of the game against Guyana, Joey and Robinson underwent a fitness test and just couldn't make it. So the nod came to me in that direction against Guyana and I played against Guyana at Kensington Oval. I think I got like four wickets in the game. Either four, either three or two. Some of them about the total was either five or or four. So I got the nod for the rest of the season and I played against Trinidad and the, I think it was USA or some of the other team like that. But I ended the tournament with eleven wickets. But my first game as, as a youth cricketer was against Guyana at Kensington over. <laughs> okay, and, and how many years did you play at the youth level? You know, I only get to play one year. I only play a year up under 19. From under 19, I went straight to the Jamaica Child. I think being a Jamaica Child was just my experience because they had, they had selected a, um, a West Indies under 19 team that didn't tour. So from that three games, I took 11 wickets and I was at a function at night and overheard somebody comparing me with Robert Rampal, who was the leading wicket taker at the tournament. I was like, how, how is this possible? But being at the function and after they, they actually called out yeah, the, 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 the under 19 squad for West Indies, I was a part of it. At that time, it was me, Sean Finley, Xavier Marshall, Santoki, and, and, and um, Churchill. Those were, those were the Jamaicans who was included in. Who were, who were picked for the West Indies on the 19th. But they didn't tour that year either. Oh, so 
you were in with a bunch of top cricketers at that time because you have caught some names. Those were some, <laughs> you know, fierce hitting cricketers, and, and at the same time, the bowlers were excellent, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. all right. So, what I want to do is uh, take us back to probably one of your better um, schoolboy cricket match, you know, one that you remember for, 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 um, for years to come. It could be even one ball, but before you get into it, I'll just tell you mine. Is that, you know, when I was at States, I'll just tell you, it's a one ball thing. You know? and I w we went and we played um, Cornwall College and we had a guy, every ball I bowl, I was just um, bowling basically, you know, length ball. And uh, before I bowl the man, the front foot, you know, to everything, you know, back of a length, a little front foot. And I heard JB from the stand say, Tall Pierce! <laughs> and I am telling you, I know exactly what he's saying. Like, what, why have this man coming front foot to everybody to you, big tall man, you know? And yeah. I run in the room and I put the bouncer down and tell you, as a guy coming forward, he bucked it. <laughs> and he, he was on the turf for a long while. We were putting water in him, everything to revive him. And people yeah. will not know this. This is where. I kind of get nervous, you know, JB, you call me at the team pace because I get nervous in bowling, that short ball because I thought the guy was dead, man. So, you know, that was something yeah. that lived with me through my years. Even when I think about bowling, I bounce, I remember this. <laughs> well, to be honest, there, there's a couple, there's a couple games that, that lived with me, which I can remember vividly. Um, there was this game at States where I actually knocked somebody in the head as well. And... That person was probably the best bat from Louisville at the time. We playing at States. And the, the hill looked a little bit darkish like. And the time was cool. At that time, I was just raw. You know, still <laughs> I don't know what is happening, but I was raw, like sheer pace at school boy level. And um, I hit this guy in the head. And let me tell you, I think I think I got about six wickets in the game. Six wickets in the game. And, and all of them came from the hit that the person had. He was the best bat, so. You know, the rest of it is history. Everybody start backing up. You know what I mean? But there was this game at Alphard, a final against Arm. Um, it was Homewood. And uh, while playing the game, I could remember that Wayne Simpson and I were bowl for an entire session. I mean, Antin. You know? And uh, that was one of the things that at that point, at schoolboy, I said, look, that was sheer work. And, you know, bowling with an off spinner, you know, really, I get no tricks. So at the time, my fitness was like, like tops. You know what I mean? And there was this other game that I play against, Womud again. It was a final. We were at the game, and I think, for second innings. In the second innings, we, 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 we got like about 10 runs. 10 runs to win the game. And when we walk over the field, we actually started celebrating in the dressing room. And JB walked into the dressing room and said, like, look, we are you in here with a lot of knives? Is that a good game to play the game? Is that over yet? So we are you inside and celebrate? Because it's 10 runs. And let me tell you, Talpi, we actually we lose five rookies to get the 10 runs. Mm. Man started running the dressing room. Man, everybody started to go podcast. We said, all right, Brenton was there as well. So I said, no, man, piece of cake, please. We lose, we lose five rookies to get the 10 runs, man. Wow. I could remember how I'd probably pull off a full blooded pull shot, you know. And this guy from from home would add in food. I mean dive up the man as clearly. Full right all over that. And the man dive up the man. Yeah man, so that game me trust me, me cannot forget the game. You know, in the finals you get ten to win. Laugh we laugh, man, because we don't have the cup already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that's seal. After that, everybody get nervous, man. Everybody start turn around. Man starts him and I come in. Brenton run out, I go for three. And after I run out, where? Everybody start running for pads. Nobody not pad up. I turn around, you know. So no man not pad up. No man not ready to go back. That's an easy thing for states. <laughs> yeah, man. So that game until today. I cannot forget. I cannot forget that game. All right. You know, my question is, did you went, went out there to bat? Well, I, di I didn't get there, you know, because I was probably down, a little bit down in the bush at the time. Okay. Yeah, I was down in the bush at the time, you know. All right. <laughs> no, all right. No, so you basically, I you know if I if I if I recall early, you get a call, play Jamaica national senior team 
could you tell mm -hmm. us what year and the feeling when you know that yo Jerome Taylor including the Jamaica national side? Tell us about well, that was the same year that I played that I played youth cricket. So that was that was in 2002, 2003. You understand? Because um my 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 transition was like very, very short from, from youth cricket to West Indies level. It was in the, the, the time span of probably about a couple of months. I, don't, I can't tell you this. It, it wasn't a year. I don't think it was a full year. Yeah, I understand because um, I played under 19. I went to Chad. Like I said, it was nearly for experience. I don't think there was considering playing me at the time because I, I, I was 18 years at the time. Not to say at 18 years old, I cannot play, but I don't think they were considering playing me. Because when I went to the Chiles, I have the Adley Sanson, Franklin Rose, Dwight Mays, Darren Powell, and, and, and a lot more others that was there. You understand? So I think I went there mainly for experience. But the experience that I got, it was one that actually blew a lot of people, a lot of persons' mind. Because I was the only fast one at the time that took two five wicket hards in the trials. I was on Robert Samuel's team at Melbourne. At that time, I used to wet the cricket ball. And let me tell you, nobody could bat it. Me actually, I hide the cricket ball from them, them days. <laughs> and Robert Sam walk over to me and said, Look, why are you hiding the ball? I said, Because one side darker than one side, I hide it. So my brain had worked a long time in a cricket. You understand? I <laughs> you know, can, you know, can do things, but I outsmart people. I fax people just to see him. And he said, You have to hide it, man. Make them see, because they still not go back it. And let me tell you, I lick off everybody for the for them foot. So I end up with five wickets in the game. No. As the youngest ball, fast bowler in a the, in a the, in a the trials, the only one who took two five wicket hall, he left them with no reason but to pick me. You're right, you <laughs> I went in, and after I got into the into the team, I didn't start as well. You know, you're a young boy, you can't start. The yeah, senior yeah. man, they must So you're going to hold it and go and run around the place like a bit. That's some water, good man. You know what I mean? Which I did with pride. Because I know one day, one day, my time will come. My first game was against Trinidad. And um, playing against Trinidad, uh, I think first innings, I got two wickets in the first innings, two wickets. But the skipper actually took the ball from me after my ball about three overs. Because my first game, the man gave me a new ball and my ball a full toss. The man took the ball from me, brother. Man, take the ball for me. Me get back the ball long at the back end and me get two wickets. Second innings, history again, man. Eight of them, eight of them will go in the bars. Yep. I, I, yeah, I think I remember, I remember that one. Eight for 59, right? Yes, man. Ball I get old again and me start work on it and start lick with people. Ganga, put him back over head, be a ball a pitch. We outside that stone. Broke off him. Broke long him. Take them from back in, man. Right, so so really and truly. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, man. So really and truly, that that series. I just want to tell you something. That series, that 2003 Caribbean series, you were named yeah. the most promising bowler. Yes, you know, I was. Yeah. Bag, bagging 21 wickets, an average of about 20.14. You know, as a young youth coming in and grabbing them wicket there at that um, average. You know, that, that said something about you in terms of your talent, you know, and you as a person, you know, because you have to be strong to be among those those cricketers that you were playing with at the same time. So yeah. being 18 years old and being the most promising, how did you feel at that stage? You know, basically a schoolboy here, you know. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I mean, after after getting the award, to be honest, it, it was a prestigious feeling, you know. Um, your first year at cricket, at big man cricket. And um, he was awarded as the most promising fast bowler. So that is actually saying something to you, you know, because I, I was not the only youngster play. Other, other teams have young signings, you know. So um, to, 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 to get the award as the most promising fast bowler, it was a prestigious feeling to be honest. That was the closest I get to something like that um, as, a, as a youth growing up. Yes, I won a couple of man of the match um, awards, yes, but they did. They, they, the most promising fastball at the time, young promising fastball at the time, was, was the one that stood out um, um, for the season. All right. Another thing I want to say to you, and I've just, you know, I will give up um, 
credit where credit is due, you know. As a young piece coming into Jamaica team and not even playing a full season in terms of you just play a few match. Your card yes. West Indies. Oh, <laughs> tell us about that now. <laughs> well, let me tell you. Um you see, you see strong mind, hard work, commitment, dedication it goes a far away. Because um as a youth growing up, I, I was one who actually I, I I believe that I would have made it to the top level. Yes, but not as soon as it came. I can recall that um, one day going to Aberdeen school, I came home from school and I saw my dad sitting on the, the chair and I was watching cricket. And I went over to him and said, you know, I'm going to let you watch me play one day. And he turned to me and said, you have what it takes? I said, yeah, man. He said, well, all right, if you have it, then everything good. The day I got called up for West Indies, he was the first person I picked up the phone and called. It was also my LZS yes, because it was overwhelming. And it, you know, as something that I always have my eyes on, you know, I always working towards it, to be honest with you. And let me tell you, if any cricketer that I came across that I played that I've played with, when you ask him about me, work, fitness, and all these things, they will tell you, I was never short of it. You yeah, understand? I was never short of it. Going to stitch, you know, I mean, you should tell us that, all right, when you have exam time, you go and train three days a week, you take two days, so you train five days a week. Wow. Yeah, many of us keep on the train five days. Too. Sometimes you come home and try to study. Well, that's what means, that's what the book comes. I just sleep on the book sometimes. Yeah, that's show your work ethics, you know. And at the same time, you're still playing local cricket because I know you're playing back at Appleton. I even remember one year playing with you. This is the first time I really saw you in action, you know. Yeah. I think we had played a game against either Hamden or Langpan, some of those um, in the Sugar League. And, you know, both of us opened that. that, uh, that. Big up 30. That's Thompson. Oh, okay, yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> A few people are joining, you know. Yeah. So we wanna just you know welcome all our viewers, you know. Thanks for joining the program. And as we said, just share the program, let others see and know, because you know it's it's a very good thing when we have a young man like Jerome Taylor who will be able to inspire other young cricketers to say, guess what? You can make it, and it doesn't matter where you're from, you know, wherever yes, you're, you're from, you can make it by hard work and dedication. The man is telling you about he putting in in the work. You know, nothing came easy. He put in the work and he got the result. And as a matter of fact, give them no chance, as he said, in the trials. As a young boy, going up with several big um, bowlers, Darren Sands and all those guys there. You know, taking two five wicket all, there's no way they, can, they, they, they can't not include you in that. So. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. So, so this now, this West Indies, getting the cap, I just want to know the feeling. How does it feel? As an 18 year old, you now going on to represent not does your country now, you know, you represent the entire Caribbean as an yeah. 18 year old. That's a lot of responsibility. How did you feel? Let me tell you, getting there at the time, I was not even aware of the responsibility that was, was entrusted upon me at that particular time. But just being there and, and, and knowing that it was well deserving. Trust me, the feeling was prestigious. Um, when I was in St. George's, I was in Grenada at the St. George's Shell Cricket Academy. When I was I was heading to an etiquette class, an etiquette class, yes. And then um, Raja Harper stopped me at the door as I was about to enter the classroom. And he said, young man, um, you have been chosen to go and represent the West Trust me, Talby, I could not console myself. I went into the class after that still, but the smile was there. It's like somebody know like something happened, you know? But what is it? Because a couple of my under-19 friends was there. Because Sean Finley, Dan Zahayat, who I played cricket with in Jamaica, and Maurice Keppel, and, and Andrew Richards was there. A couple of us was there. But from I went into the classroom, the smile was like, my smile was brought to my ear, so to speak, you know? But they asked me what happened. So maybe break the silence to them and tell them, all right. But I had to leave the same night. 
Now catching that flight and when I got to St. Vincent, me going to my room and when me looking at the room, your bag with some clothes. Because I hoping it see my name from the shirt. I said, what? <laughs> no. <laughs> Trust me, the feeling, it was mind blowing, man. You know? So all of this, it's just me alone. I smile by myself. I can't keep it. So I have to take up my phone and my car wave well. So my car wave well in the room, man. It was late, you know. But wake up, man, say, hello. You could have hear, you could have hear how the man in advice, you know. Like the man, this terrible times. Like, man, I say, who can't come in the water, man? Man, vex, but trust me to hold me glad and happy for his place, cause you know, as a youth I grew up, you know, today somebody in a park and watch Wavel Hines and play for West Things and I was just in a distance and wanna get out from the field, you know what I mean? And when I get the opportunity, even if you know say boy, Brian Lara, I go up on the same field with this man, I go play with this man, the man who you see as a, a cricket idol, this man. It's like a great thing, you know? So I go to me call Wavel, call Wavel, a Jamaican, so I pick up the phone and call Wavel, because nothing good like that. You know what I mean? And then call me, Mr. Boy, Wavel, me there, and I said, boom. He goes to the button and said, Mr. Bobby, you yeah, call me so late, man. I said, boy, I'm just there, man, so I make you know something in the place. He said, all right, man, tomorrow morning, talk. He got the phone. You know, I still can't sleep that way. <laughs> you know, like me, I feel pinch myself and I want to let this thing away. I still can't sleep, man. You know, so I start trying my clothes, but let me tell you, them clothes are big like frack when you get them. <laughs> That's but true. It was never here in idea to me, you know. It was just a proud moment. Me just know says the clothes I may get a mine. A mine here night, and me likely to represent West Indies before anything can. Yes, me don't know whether me go start or not, you know. You understand? But yes, I am here. Because to be honest with you, before before the call up to you know at, at at the academy, um they played a series against Australia. So they was in Grenada for, for a game and then they came at the academy to practice. So they asked for some bowlers to bowl and I think I was bowling to Chris up front. And whilst I was bowling, um, Harper came to me and stopped me. He said, I can stop bowl because Brian asked him to stop me because he wanted to bat some ball from me. Tyson Garden, big up. And <laughs> when, when, when they took the ball from me, when Brian came to bat now, I started to bowl. And yes, I kind of rushed him to come. I said, this is man, I'm the captain, you know, so everything in the tank, I have to go empty it now. <laughs> and let me tell you, the pitch flap up, you know, it's easy for him to die in the basket, let me tell you. <laughs> when I done bowl to him, you say, my birthday come, because I'm tired, I'm not saved nothing. This is and it. And after I'm left in it, when I'm left in it, I see my talk to her and things. But, you know, they have to move on and then, when they start, so. But when Sri Lanka come, because shortly after, shortly after she left Sri Lanka, I left on the island, for, for um, them start a test and one day series. So they started it, the ODI series first. So that's when them called me up at St. Vincent to play against Sri Lanka. Yep. Yeah, I remember, I remember it, you know, you hear this young young boy, you know, from Jamaica into the West Indies team, you know. And then when I realized a statesman, trust me, you know, yeah. it, it, it was a good feeling even to just know that a man from my alma mater is in the West yeah. Indies again. Yeah. You know? So, you know, it was a good feeling. But what I want to ask you now is no, you know, not just bowling to Brian Lara in the next, but being on the field with this man, your captain, the great Brian Charles Lara. Just tell us what it is like playing with such talent. Well, well, you know, you know, when I first, I don't, I don't do it much after, after, after about a year or two. I never do it much. But, you know, when I first started playing, I used to, like, there was all this platform you could go on and you could, like comment and stuff like that. Interviews done so you could listen back to some of them and you know, being on the field with him, sharing the same space in a dressing room, you know, that he would come up and talk to you, young man, are you okay? And whatever. These are the kind of, these are the kind of stuff that he would come to you and say, you know what I mean? Um, don't worry yourself, just go there, enjoy your cricket and be relaxed. You know? Just go and play cricket. Don't worry about anything. It's like him, him, him actually give me the go ahead to just go out and be free. You know? And I like him, I put the pressure by my boy, you know, say I wish that play, but you know, you know, you know, the, you know, the pressures that this game, you know, many million people are represented, you know, the pressure we come with. No, him never did that. Him just a boy, look, it's a game of cricket, and it's just like it's just a level like it's higher, so just go out and express yourself. You know what I mean? He never tried to tell me, boy, to that particular man, go this line to that man, or go whatever. No, just be yourself, go out and play. You know what I mean? And and that was one of the things that really sent me right ahead, me just go out, just do myself, and um. 
after the game, he was interviewed and he was, I think he asked, they, they had asked him a question about me. And he said that, as far as you know, it looked like, I'm on my way because it looked like I have a very good head on, 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 on the shoulders. You know what I mean? In terms of thinking out quickly. He didn't have to tell me where to go at any given time either, unless they want to move from somewhere because I'm playing cricket at school. You're you fast bowler, you go and find it. And when you're not bowling, you probably stop a mid half or somewhere. So you're not finding any the fancy places where you're not supposed to be. Unless somebody take you and put you somewhere. So me I always look one of the spots when I normally go to school. I'm playing for Jamaica, me I always look one of the spots. So you never have to tell me where to go. You understand? So that made, that, that made his life a lot easier with me. All right, thank you for sharing, you know, playing with the, 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 the legend, Mr. Brian Charles Lara. All of us really enjoy his days of cricket. We wish we have another Brian Lara in, in this time. You know, at the same time, I just want to big up all of our viewers who are commenting. So I want to big up Roger Tracy, big up yourself, Mr. Garden. And you see, Mr. Buckner, come on in us. It's Monday. Mr. Thompson, big up on yourself, you know. And Mr. Barrett, so yes, I yes, boy, it was a holiday at school. Yeah, you know, I mean, I'm the first person that you know, holiday at States, man. <laughs> Celebration, <laughs> States, man, God, yeah, yeah. Guys, level. Me, me, with the with the end to where I call home after the game, them said, Boy, no school, no keeping everybody turning up at school, but class classes were about, man. Everybody now, they turn and watch cricket. <laughs> yes, man, you know, that, that, that was the day, days, man, you know, and you know, I, I see. Chavez, come on, but now, you had mentioned about Wayne Simit, and I really want to go back to this guy, Wayne Simit. You said Yannis Bola entire spell. This guy, Wayne Simit, I, I don't think I've seen a talent like him, but just like you'd see about Kamal Dennis, I think it's a talent that have been lost. I don't know what happened, but... Well, I tell you, I've played, I've played with many cricketers, yeah? And let me tell you, I don't know how to Jamaica could go like that. He never reached up there, but like me say, I played with him. And let me tell you, not an ordinary player. I know that man. A man with men. You know what I mean? And like me say, when you see talent like those, and it just never reached its truest potential, you only have to term it as underachiever. You know what I mean? I mean, we, I mean, very, very, we, we underachiever. I you know, also want to give a shout out to the man called English man, Mr. White. Uh, this man, you know, man here from way Portland. Big up yourself, Mr. Lenroy. You know, my, my commentator of the season right now in the minor league here in the US. Big up yourself. And with that, Jerome, I want to mm -hmm. go back to since we're on spinners, because even though Nikita Miller, another statesman you would have played with at the highest level, West Indian. But I still think um, Simo was as good as Nikita Miller. But, you know, I want to ask you, you know, what it what was like playing with people from your alma mater at the highest level now? You know, you, Darren Powell, you and um, Nikita Miller, Brenton Parchment, people, you know, yo, we are come from far. How it feel? <clears throat> well, well, the feeling was great, to be honest with you. And um, it's like, like Nikita, Brenton and Darren, we, 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 we are... We miss a long lasting friends even today. It's just that people grow and get, get a lot more responsibilities now. So sometimes we might not keep in touch as we used to, but we still keep in touch at, at times. I understand. And I'm sharing just in room. I actually was a roommate with Darren Powell when I was playing for Jamaica. And I also room with Nikita. Nikita, Milan, I room for the longest. And if I should say I'm my best roommate, <laughs> you understand? <laughs> yeah, man, Nikita, my best roommate, man. Wait. Then that man, we, we, we had some experience there at Um, I could go back to a year when they said, that, Why you play as and when you want nobody have a drink before no game, man, you can't decide, you can't. We say, All right. So every evening, me and Nikita come in, me and Nikita, the other way, go on the street, we eat out, you know. But after we don't do now, we drink two drinks and then we go back in. Can I tell you, say that year, the person with the most wicked was Nikita, and I mean, follow him second. So, you know, say, our room full of wicked cinema. So, like how we do the job for the team for the entire year. Yep. <laughs> you see, here, there's nobody enough to drink. Man, this man, every night we drink, brother. But this is how we operate. We don't drink for junk. So, we go out and we say, all right, we eat some food. We can't go back in first. All right. We can go back in with time so we can get enough first because we have, we have to go back to Jamaica again. You know, it's all. 
and and when you start playing, you start to become a senior player. Then the, the responsibility now, and the likes of people are gay, you know, and you have to realize that you know, as a senior player, the responsibility is yours. You understand? A junior man now come in, you can't expect a junior man to do what you do. You have to carry the bulk of the work, so you set it for the junior man coming to like, you come under too much pressure. You understand? So playing for Jamaica as well, in you know, the time when I used to play for set, it was like me and William Simpson. But at times when I play for Jamaica too, it was like me and Nikita Miller, them throw the bag, a killer and forget a killer down the so a killer work that. So them rotate everybody on the next end. Cause when killer hold a ball in the bars, no matter everybody throw them in, they still can't get them out of the square. Not so easy. Come on, killer was good. And I just let the viewers know killer is you know Nikita Miller is Nikita Miller, also, yeah. Ab Ab Abadeen. No, no, probably I'm going to see him primary school, right? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, man. So we just want to big up Nikita Miller, you know. Good youth, big up yourself. So, um, Jerome, I want to jump straight into the um 2006 uh, ICC Championship. And this is where you, you, you set a record right there, you know. A hat trick yeah. against Australia. When Australia basically just need about 21 runs to win. <laughs> and earlier, before the hat trick, you'll get Ricky Ponting. So you yeah. get um in another trick you get uh, Michael Hussey, Brett Lee, and um, Brad Hogg, which Michael Brad Hussey Hogg, was yeah. the yeah um, Michael Hussey was at the time was was the number one batsman in the world. Ricky Ponting was about Mr. number four. Mr. Kitty, he was called Mr. Kitty. Yeah. So you basically dismissed to the greatest batsman in the world. But the, the hat trick that you got is something that you know was not achieved before against this Australian powerhouse in an ODI. <clears throat> tell us about that hat trick. Well, to be honest with you, you know, if I can tell you something, probably if I realized I was on a hat trick, I wouldn't get it. <laughs> to be honest with you, because I think I would have put myself under too much pressure. But given the fact that how the hat trick came, the two last ball off and over, and then the first ball off the other over. So I was not even thinking about that, to be honest with you. But the pressure that the game and how the game has come down tight is like, Every ball your ball is like you're trying to squeeze somebody. It was about <laughs> 20 years ago. You know? So it, it wasn't so much about the hat trick or whatever you're looking at. Is that you're watching the scoreboard and the scoreboard is a guideline. How much runs they're supposed to get and how much deliveries they have left. So every over is like you're trying to squeeze. You force them to make an error. You understand? That year to me is a, is a year where it stands out because it was actually a comeback year for me into West Indies cricket because I started 2003, I got injured 03. I was out from 03, 04, came back 06. You understand? So it was a comeback here for me too. You know what I mean? So it was all to give. I mean, you're just coming back. So you have to give yourself every opportunity, every chance to get another tour after another tour. You know what I mean? So it was one which we actually went, I think we went to, went to Pakistan after that or something like that. But it was a long tour because we were away from home for a long while. But not to give from the hat trick. It was, I think it was me and Darren Bravo bowling at the time because it was coming down to the dead overs. And it was just, it was a good game, to be honest with you. Because every man for themselves and everybody looking. Because I even call, I even call back home and when I call home people, like they were saying you were bowling quick. I said, no. Because even JB, I spoke to JB, he was bowling quick, man. I said, no, sir. I actually just in a good rhythm and I feel like me a bowl fast. But you know, my rhythm, it was, when me say super clean, sweet, it's like me just a float to the float to the feet. You know what I mean? So yes, the ball I go down there with some pace, but it was effortless because you not know, feel like me I put so much on it either. So so I, I don't know if you you, you you had realized really, but in that series I think you took like thirteen wickets, which was another record. So you set the record hat trick, you get yeah. thirteen wickets in a single um championship. You know. Really and truly, that was a big achievement for a youngster like you, as you say, coming off injury, getting back into the West Indies and bowling like this against Australia. You know, yeah, which was one of the top team at the time as well. You know, yeah. So that 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 speak volume about you and and your cricket. But you mentioned a, a while ago about floating and the you know the way you were going running in. But I just want to let you know that watching you playing um cricket, your run up. You have a very, very steady run up. Not 
all bowlers have this type of run up. You know, I don't know if you know, but they, they have compared you, you know, in terms of not just your bowling, but your attitude, your aggression, and everything to Michael yeah. Holden. And, you know, to be compared to a man of such class, you know, it's, you, 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 you're really not bowling ordinary. So tell us how it feels that you hear somebody like compare you, uh, comparison like that. Well, I've been, I've been comparing with, with you and the greats because um, at one point, being around the cricket and, and um, playing, even some of the great players who play and pass, they would come to the cricket ground sometime and a lot of them used to compare me and Malcolm Marshall as well. You understand? Maybe Marco used to run from a wider angle, but a lot of them used to come like the approach to the, to the wicket. It was similar. People also compare me with, 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 with Winston Benjamin as well. You understand? I don't know if it is the action or the resemblance in terms of looks or whatever the case may be. But a lot of people always say stuff like that. But I mean, <clears throat> when, when you're getting compared with, with, with great cricketers who have played and have served, served, served the game to a, a very good bit, then it is not to swell your head, but to make sure that to understand that look, if you're among those people, that simply means you're heading in the right direction. You understand? So, yeah, you take cues from that. And, and, and when you hear stuff like that, that, that the work never stop. Yeah, you know. And, and with that, you see, I put up that, that, that um, 106 button at number eight. You know, Mr. Thompson, thank you. So, you're not just a bowler. Nobody not really didn't know you as a batsman, like a batsman. But we know when you go states, you can bat. You can hold a bat at somehow. But, all right, this is now 2008 against New Zealand. You basically made 106. I don't think most people was looking for that. <laughs> so you tell us about this game and this 106 and your batting. Well, it's just a deal. It's just a deal which... The right not never go wrong for me. You understand? Um, we were in a spot about that when I stepped to the crease, but I was batting in one of the one of the the, 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 the best at the time in the world. Um, they are calling the wall for West Indies that is shooting around Chandapal. This man like him can't get out. He's never in any hurry when this man is batting. No matter how fast you are bowl, may never see you hurry yet. You know? And he's a player who never likes to get out. Of so if you ask me if I could do this again, I would tell you if Shiv is not batting, I don't think I could get it done. Because other people might out what around me. But when I went to the Cree to bat with him, there wasn't any, there wasn't any pressure. And at the stage of the game, to me, I never see there's any pressure either. But if I was supposed to go there and play a supporting role, I think we'd have probably all out by then. So when I went out, he told me just to play a natural game, like, you know, just bat, be yourself, you know? And he was never afraid to give me the strike either because batting at number eight, you know, most batsmen want to take the strike and, you know, trick the shield, the tail end out. So he was never afraid to give me the strike. So I tell myself, well, all right, Mr. Vitor is out in everybody, LBW. I am not going to drop my foot down the line and make the ball hit my foot. <laughs> I go and put my foot beside and I go and swing the bat through the arc because most of the ball are coming in. You understand, like him, I give you the handball, loads of handballs. I say, all right, then cool. And we go there, and me hit a few, and then me start straight, and me start the ball just the way I want to see it. So, like a man did say once, man see ball, man hit ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So, it was a real win. I'm just to honest with you. And after me scored the 50, me did there and then take a new ball, and me say, what, what is this now, guys? You take a new ball at a number eight, after me got 50, and... So I walked down to Shiva and said, so, well, Shiva, I don't know about you, know, but I'm not going to hang around like you. You understand? So, yeah, that was that. After me getting to the 90s, then it was a bit like, I watch the scoreboard and I realized, hey, shit, they are 90s. Yeah. So, yeah, the, the, the nerves kind of chipping, yes, because if you realize at the time, I had a couple of players miss after um, James Franklin. Because he was bowling left arm over, going across me. So, I had a couple hit down the ground and I missed and I said, but no, if he's going across him, I have to go a little bit squarer. And I understand? He picked up again because he feel him feeling like made so I go a bit squarer. There comes the bones with the four, we bring up the hundred. You know what I mean? And, and, and that was history again. Another another one which got out in the book for me as well. But in that number, he had scoring a hundred. Yeah. All right. So 
Just, just tell us the feeling when, 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 when that ball you really realize that ball is in the boundary. Uh, you know, the scoreboard well, turnover well, you at a hundred. I, I, I had watched a lot of people score hundred, yes, but when me scored the hundred, me they didn't know who was celebrating, yeah, man. We just, we just had to do something, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, like, but but when I look back towards the dressing room, I could I could I could realize that yeah, it was felt by by everyone because as cool as Dunedin was, every member of the team came out because we, at the time most people were sitting on the inside, you know. But when 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 I reached the landmark. And I look back up there, I could see like like everybody, the whole team, everybody, they came out and everybody was the standing of age and everything, the clapping, you know what I mean? And yeah, it, it, it sometimes gives you goose pimples at times when you see these things, you know? So it was heartwarming to see. Uh, great. Uh, that Thompson uh, nearly touched, touched, touched God by a jump. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. Right. So anyway, we right. had the comment. I like, I like the fact that the, the people have comment. So we are got to Mr. Gardner now. But Gardner said, "Boy, you bowl the sharpest bouncer to him there, Melbourne." You know. And El Tyson, 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 that did ball murder right now. So you see, when you play against him, you have you always rush him first in the car. You don't want him rush you first. <laughs> you understand? So in Tyson, see people who claim they can't murder cricket ball. You have to go for them. No, they come for you, brother. All right. And that's something I want to ask you about, Taylor. Because, you know, I tell you, when you, you, you're coming up, you say basically slender uh, in body. But later on, you, you, you gain some shoulder and muscle and everything. But, you know, for you, whenever you bowl a bouncer, most of you realize it is well targeted. And I know you, you favor even the yaka. But just tell us a little about your bowling style. What comes to your head whenever you're approaching the wicket or a, a particular batsman? Well, let me tell you, first of all, um, when me I play, my, my, my aim is to get you out. You hear a lot of people <coughs> tell me about bowling maidens after maidens. Yes, you can bowl it, but one of my things when I always tell me skipper them to look, I go and bowl 10 maidens and I go and have to come back and bowl to the same man that makes no sense to me. It's not like me I go know say a man like the ball straight and don't play the ball away from him good and you still are bowling too straight sometimes. But me like bowl out of the pins. Me I bowl out of your pins, me I can get your catch, LBW. Ball, you understand? Now, me just not feel sometimes waste my energy. I ball fourth stump, fifth stump all day. I wait for you to come for me. No, me I come look for you with a new ball. Now my hand and my weapon that so me can't allow you to see up all of that and then expect you to out with the old ball. I am going to attack you. Maybe two out of every over, me I come looking for something. If me start it, I miss you. Well, not go on, me probably can close out, yes, but. I just the mindset. I was never one who overly aggressive in terms of short pitch ball. My aggression was length ball, holding at your stumps. So when you speak about aggression, sometimes people think you have to be bowling short ball, left, right, and center. No. And I was never one who to always give you eye opener. Short pitch ball over you sometimes. It's like you tell the man, you are showing how you bowl a short ball. My short ball most times are surprising. Because it's supposed to be a setup. It's supposed to keep you coming forward, forward, forward. Then me catch you. When me have the one I want to me, I go give you a shot back. But if me I send you back, send you back. Most people easily, they never have put out them foot for the pitch pitcher. All right. So, all right. Thanks for sharing some of that insight in terms of your mindset, you know, when, you, when you're playing in terms of a bowler. And I just see Mr. Kevin. Kenneth Hartley, come on here. You know, welcome to the program. Thanks for coming on. Chadley Morris, you know, thanks for joining, guys. Um, Kenneth, uh, right now, said the greatest ball <clears throat> you basically bowl is the one where you give Kevin Peterson in Jamaica. I don't know if you remember that, but... Talky, a lot of people would say that to me, but you know, it's funny enough. I don't think that was the greatest, you know, but it seemed that way. I think KP played played a little bit too early and he was heading to the inside. If you look panic, you can see that KP, if you watch the ball again, KP was falling over. So he presented the edge of the bat to the ball, so to speak. So he missed it. I think the ball out McFry was more more of a, a clever cricket ball. You understand? McFry was old fox. Okay. McFry was an half quarter. Playing away from him, body. so that it actually got to breach me, breach him, me breach him in him, 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 him gate, so to speak. 
but KP KP one it looks good, you know, and the sight of it looks good. So a lot of people say that's the greatest, that's the greatest delivery. All right. So with that, I want you to take us back to your West Indies career, and what would have been your best best game you consider, you know, in terms of uh, overall. You repeat, can you repeat that for me? I said, what would you consider your best game for the West Indies? A uh, one or two that you, what stand out to you? Well, the best game for West Indies, um, I have a few, you know, um, but Sabina Park was always my happy hunting group. So most of my games, um, trust me, I wish sometimes I could have dig up Sabina Park and really carry it around the world. With me. You know what I mean? Um, I played a game against Australia in Sabina Park as well. I got six for, I think it was six for 47 again against Australia. The same time, I think first innings about six made in the street in that in that game as well, which was a good one. The five the five against England, yeah, that's in Park. Five five eleven was a good game, but let me tell you, I took a five five in Pakistan against Pakistan. Trust me, it is a game which which it was nice. And that the big man as well, in the man who I got him out. Um. Actually, Flicker miss everything too. You know what I mean? So that game was a good game. All right. I just want to say, uh, most of the games that we have seen you in, you look pretty sharp. Always looking that you you, you want to take wickets. You know, even if you don't, you know, you know, come out with the result that you probably want at the time. But definitely, you look that you're going for wickets. You know, wicket taker, and you're basically just consistent in terms of your your your, your, your way of bowling. You know, we, we would always know the same Jerome Taylor showing up. Because we know the, the type of ball, your ball, and so forth. Which, you know, was good as a cricketer in that uh, sense of consistency. But what happened... Yes, Mr. Lewis, hello. <clears throat> yeah, man. So, um, injury now, Jerome. We're going to touch injury. Um, we know most cricketers, they go through... Yeah, injuries. Um, Could you tell yeah. us... in? Injuries that affect you during your career, because we knew you had some injuries. Why, well, Talvi? Let me tell you, I can't tell my own physio about it. You name the injuries that I can't tell you. I have everyone. I have two nail injuries, I have it. Every injury you can't every injury is I can't think of. They're on tail have it. And, and well, we had it. Yes, because uh, well, um, people if you just join in, let, you, let I tell you, Jerome Taylor is ready. The man is fit as a fiddle and ready for crickets. But, you know, we're going to get to that little later. So, um, Jerome, without these injuries, would you think you would have basically have a lot more wickets? Because then you'd have to play more games. So, tell us in what way the injury affected you. Well, well, yes, it does. Um, because with all together... You're talking about six years of my career went on due to injury. Um, like I said, I got injured in 2003. I never played until 06 again. All right. And then I played from 06 up until 2010. I got injured in 2010 in Trinidad playing against. Um, I think it was, it was again. But I can remember after out somebody. This game was again and I got injured in, in Trinidad. Jesus. That's a long time by now. But when I got injured in 2010, I was out of the game again until twenty third until 2013. I made a comeback 2013. I think it was England. I played we were playing against England in, in Trinidad. So I got injured and then the injury it took me out of the game for another three years. So all in total, it was six years away from the game. I, I have made several attempts to come back, but it just never happened. You know, all right. Uh, I, I have one of my um guests um commenting, but we also on, on, on YouTube too. Um, I want to know basically what it was like praying with Christopher Henry Gale. I think we couldn't go through this without talking about Christopher Henry Gale. You know, in you play with him, Jamaica, you played in West Indies. Just tell us what it was like praying, man, like Gale. Yeah, if you ask anybody what it what it does, it gives you a sense of security. Whether Chris Gale make a duck or he make a hundred, when you're playing with Gale, trust me, anything Gale, you just like you feel like you're not going to lose. Just in presence alone, make you feel like you're going to win. You know what I mean? Um, 
know what he's capable of doing. A man can take a game for in a short space of time. One of the comments had never seen a cricket. You know, not somebody who will look like he's flustered or bothered by much that is happening around him. You know, um, for someone that I know, a very soft spoken person, but whenever he speaks, um, it's worthwhile listening to. You know, so um, it was always, always a pleasure being on a cricket field in a team with him, playing with him. I, I never so like playing against him because I know he's capable, but <laughs> playing against him, you know what you have to do. You can get rid of him quick before, you know what I mean? So it, it was never really much. And, and playing against him as well, it was never really much of a challenge to me because I have played with him so much, bowl against him so much in the net. So sometimes I know exactly how to go about, you know. But he's that kind of player that can manage or match up to any bowler on any given day. And so this man said, uh, God, Gail, as they call him in Lucas, yeah, man, crampy, a big, big thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll touch another cricketer since some comments over this side and the cricketers. And they, 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 I was just going to go back to um, Mr. Hartley. You always old fox Ricky Ponting. Ricky Ponting is one of the greatest cricketers I see Australia have seen, you know, pass through their camp. Just tell us about you and Ricky Ponting meet up. <laughs> Boy, I don't know you know what, what, what Ricky always saying. If you want to be in the ball, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and, and like me tell you, me is a man, me, me, like, me like the sticks. If me see this, if me not get the ball, you don't know, have to give me the ball for ball. Because if you give me the ball for ball, I tell the skipper, I'm going to ball for the sticks. With a person like me who can get the ball to go both ways, me always going to challenge them. You have to defend them. You understand? One of the things that I like, and I, I, I actually learned this very early, and it was uh, something that came across to me from Corey, Corey Callimore. Because, you know, as a young player, so play, so you, um, you know you can bowl the ball, so you, get, you can get it go both ways. So sometimes it's like in, out, in, out, you know? So he, he actually watched me bowling in the next one day and then tell me, no, that, that's not a guy. He took me under his wings as a young player, going into the West Indies team. Yeah? Okay. So I was guided by I was guided by him as a fast bowler, being in the West Indies. He one that I think have a very strong mind as well, and somebody who is good at outfaxing batters. So he told me that look, no, you have to set up batters. If you know this man, I watch you. you have to, sometimes your bowler like are uh, two overs that are outswing at him. Get him comfortable, want him to leave the bar. Once him start putting bat over him head, yeah, you're ready for the business. You know what I mean? Because him actually forget, you yeah, bowl two over to the to out swinger to a man. He probably forget so you can't bring back the ball. Because him say, oh, I just out of my ball, he can't come back at all. You mean you have him starting like that, that is the time you're going to go back in swinger. So you cannot go with him, go with him, go with him, you carry him, carry him. Then when him forget the ball, look, he can't put the back at all. You, know? you knock him. But you cannot be doing the same thing like you're out, in, out, in. You will get used to that. So you know, so you can't go in and you can't come out at will. He might go and look for you. You understand? So you have to just. So Ricky was one now. Him like him like come front foot. And because me, I am a little bit skinny. Because my shot. So my trajectory now, and I hope a big bounce away from me. Because he's a man come in front foot and him pull off a front foot. Because he's a compulsive puller. So I mean, I have to go and go with two after. But I challenge him stuff. Do you understand? I challenge him stuff. So being the short person I am, five foot ten, yeah. And you yeah, ball with some pace from a lower trajectory. The ball has skid on, skid on. So, me just decided to make my attack stones. All right. So, so that, is, that, that was your method. <clears throat> and he loves to. So, when he come and plant him foot, and I like him, can't move it again. More often than that, he play around his path. Because once he come and plant him foot, he can't do nothing again with it. He just come and put it down, and I hit that. And I found me I go to school, JB, I teach you that. When a batsman plant him foot, he can't do more around it. Yeah, yeah, yeah so you great coach. You guys have the things you look for in a batsman. Even batter's grip, you look on it too. You can't tell what the batter is good at from what he's not good at. Once you see him pick up in bat. You understand? And the most man holding bat long angle and then cut well. Anybody see holding bat down on the neck, they will pull and cut well. Might not be a good driver of the ball unless it really under their nose. So right now I'm learning something from you. You're a critical thinker. So you yeah. know, you basically analyze a player early out, 
see even the, coming to the wicket the way they, they hold the bat. A lot of people don't even know these things that the way a man pick up him bat and hold it, the way him plant him foot, you can always give yourself an advantage in the way you yeah, go you to the person. You have to look for this tomorrow close, you know, because let me tell you, the bat are comfy, you know. Kind of really comfy make it out him. So if you can get ahead of him, Mr. Wind, welcome to welcome man. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir. So you have it there ahead of the matter. You better, better him come for you. So what you have to do is any, any small little thing to do where you can use if you go ahead of him, you have to use it. You understand? Because one of the things that I always remember, you know, as a bowler, don't be afraid to try because the matter is allowed to make, to make one mistake, you know. But you can make one, two, three and you still can come for him again. So a lot of bowlers don't like to get hit around the park because they know I pitch up them a ball short, them ball wide. You know what I mean? That they are challenging you with the ball. You understand? Yeah, yeah man. Just don't, don't, don't make a mistake when I look for you if you make too early. I always hear this and I know this too. When a batter is confident, it can also be a downfall for him. Because he's too relaxed when he's confident. He's too relaxed with the shot, so he can also get him out too. Why? Right. Uh, good, 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 good reasoning. Good reasoning. You know, you know, I, I like your, your your thought process here. And at the same time, I just want to big up Omira Wright, you know, another statesman. And back in the days, we play head look up together. Mel Wint, boy, Mel, big up yourself. I, I, I had the pleasure of playing with Mel. You know, that, that, you know, I'm not a young boy, but when, when <laughs> Mel just came into to states, you know, you know, Kung Kang decided even to step away from the wicket and give Mel. Remember. A match against Yak Yasser at this time, Xavier Marshall and them were young youth. Them, you know, Melvin, you know, very good, good batsman. Went on to Melbourne and you know, when we play Jamaica under 15, under 19, Melbourne, you know, Mel, big up yourself. So, you guys just keep it coming. Up park camp, man. See my talk, see me and got to hold him over up park camp while evening. Yeah, man. So it, 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 it was really fun playing with these guys. And you know, just even the program here, guys. I, I tell you, I'm feeling really good to see some of these guys coming back, you know, old cricketers that you play with back then, you know, and cricketers that you're even playing with still here. You know, it, it's just a fun thing, you know. And really and truly, Jerome, we, we enjoy watching you, man. You know, you, you, you give West Indies, you know, a lot of a, a hope back in the days. And we well, that, well, well, we didn't know, because at the end of the day, it is my job. And and let me tell you, one thing that helped me so much too, yeah? Um, when I wasn't playing, um, given the fact that I used to go out and I used to wear all the shades and hat and things, and I used to go in, wherever cricket is playing, but I was going and I sit down anywhere and I watch it in the back. I used to sit down and listen to the people, and the way how they react to certain things, the comment that they made. So that was one of the things that helped me too. So like, oh, this is how you think about the players when they play. So when we go back, these are some of the things that I am going to change. What am I going to do about my critique and whatever, you know what I mean? So hearing people criticizing others, knowing that, yes, we are supposed to open to criticism and not take everything like somebody is talking against you because they hate you. You understand? But if people criticize you sometimes, it's not that they hate you. Sometimes that they know they can do better and they wish you do better. But because we are so small minded sometimes, when a man criticizes in a way, you think like, okay, you must have like, you know, like why you said that. But really and truly, no, I know that. Because when you are playing for the nation, trust me, when you lose, you know, them lose. You understand? Know, at the end of the day, they all want us to be winners. But themselves don't understand that sometimes you're doing all you can, but it's just happening to you. You know? So just take off. All right, with that, Jerome. You know, go down. With that, Jerome. I'm sorry about my little baby there. Uh, with that, you just said, you know, it's good to, to you know, basically analyze, not to criticize. You know. Yeah. So, a question I want to ask you now: with the current West Indies um cricket that's been played, the players and everything, just give us an overview of, of your um feedback on the West Indies currently. Well, well let me tell you. Um. I would say this to you. I would never criticize a player openly, not knowing whether the person is okay with it or not. Not wanting to hurt one's feelings doesn't mean that I cannot criticize. But a player is being chosen to play, not by himself. 
So whether a player think that he belongs to be there or uh, he doesn't, it doesn't make a difference. He was chosen by a group of people who sit down and think, okay, look, this is the best player. A lot of us learn the job on the job. One would say that Jerome Taylor, when I was picked, probably it was too early. With little or no experience, you go on the job, but you learn as quickly as possible and you move on. Right? So, a player being given the opportunity to play, go ahead and try to make the most of it. You understand? Justify the fact that you got picked. So you're here. So you justify that with your body. Or you justify it with the ball or in the field or something. You understand? You don't just go there, your profile. I, I am this and I am that. So you just you, you profile the fact that you're playing for Western. No. It's a nice feeling. It is, it is a only a chosen few get that opportunity. So if it is given to you, try to embrace it and try to do the most you can while you're there. You understand? Looking at the team now, it is a team with balance. You understand? You have players, different age group, players with different style that might suit. The difference with it is how well or how quickly people adapt to the situation and conditions that they are playing in. You understand? Like I said, a game of cricket, it doesn't change. What change about it is condition that changes the environment that you're playing in and all these things. So these are the things that you take into consideration. Not the game of cricket, because the rudiments of cricket, it does not change. So you have to change to adapt to whatever given condition to suit. And the faster you learn and you know it, it is better. It, it, it is the best thing for you. So if you're a batman, you go up on a pitch, <coughs> a pitch and you go up on a pitch, you can cut from to the guy. Now bounce enough, you have a place to go. You understand? You have to know that and know it quick. So the cross body shot might not go suit to the picture. So let me see if I can grind it out there. So as a bowler, the ball not swing. So here we go. Go a length, back a length. Nobody go to look for nothing. You put on nothing there. So ball not swing, where you go look for? People are killing. You have to know. You have to understand. Yes, we are human beings. We are not so perfect. Runs are going to make. If you don't bowl the ball, runs are going to make. If you don't bowl bad ball, nobody not have to score good balls. You understand? Yeah, and I'm going to tell you, say, boy, you can't give a man 2 4 and get him with it, nothing wrong. But you have to know why you're giving the 2 4, you have to set him up for that. So, a good team, I just, I just see people, them, I just see personally, they don't really produce the good for the people. Them. You understand? Me never see a man get picked and feast a boy and shouldn't get picked. Uh, whether we think, say, okay, you get picked ahead of a man. Yes, you get picked, like me say, the man is get picked before you're still in the but you get picked. But do the job then, because you did it. Because if you don't do the job, then it will justify the fact that you shouldn't do that. You know, I, I really like your, your, your sense of reasoning. And why I say this now is that you even go back that at the time that you were, were called to the West Indies, a man could yeah. easily say before you, you play a match that, yo, you are too young, you know, where you bring him going to play more than one or two matches in Jamaica, you, you bring him in the West Indies. But yet still, when you, 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 you went there, you did what you have to do. You know, mm -hmm. you prove yourself in, in the Caribbean se series, you get 20 other wicket. That was good enough. And I want you to know, go back to 2004, 2005, you'll end up with 26 wickets. Yeah. In the Caribbean series, again, that may get even better. You know, so you prove yourself that, yes, you are. Yo, let me give me that chance. I'm going to hold on for it. You know, so. I'm going to go back to something, Tati, right? Um, in Zimbabwe. We, we the touring party, it was me, Callimore, Mervyn Dillon, Vasper Jakes, Fidel Edwards, and, and who it was again? I think that was that was it. I think Darren Powell, yeah. That was the bowling fast bowlers for that tour. And being the two young fast bowlers, right? We did then, you know, we chat with Callimore, Vasper Jakes, and let me tell you, being around Vasper Jakes is, is a is a is a true human being, yeah. And you can't talk to him, but you have to open to criticism when you're talking to the master because he's going to tell it as it is. So we were there, and after training, we were sitting down and we were laughing, chatting, and everything. And I actually played two games at the time two games, two test matches. And I was at two wickets. From the four innings, I had two wickets. So we were talking, and, and Vasbert just came across and he said, Little man, how are you? And I said, I'm all right. You're enjoying the cricket, yeah? He said, Yeah, man. You know, you could get a hundred test wicket. So, you know, when a bigger man for me tell me that. 
you feel good. So we start laughing, say, yeah, man, that's nice, thanks. The man say, you know what, though? You have to play 100 test matches. So what he was saying there... <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> but after that, it was pure, pure fun and laughter, you know? Because he was saying that the rate you're going, yeah. you only get it per, per match. You know? Yeah, but that never, he never said anything to me like, okay, what is my talk about that? To get to the man. And then the man looked at me and said, look at it, you, you don't belong here. You all don't have any experience. You all two don't belong here. What experience do you have? What brought you here? You understand? The man said, like, man, I said, boy, you're supposed to play first class cricket guy. I said, look, how people don't know that this first class season was a fluke. So go back and play again and you can repeat the performances. Then you have the chance to come. And if you sit and you think about it, it is true and in fact, because sometimes you look at players now who play. They probably come and they have a first class season and then book a team who is not the strongest at team. They score some runs. You go down in the book as your own score. You understand where I come from? No, if you score the runs, how can you make it go and see? The man scoring runs, so yes, the man scoring runs, you have to see that. No, the fact that you cannot repeat, or you can you can constantly repeat certain performances. If you actually say, boy, look, maybe it don't look good, you shouldn't be have to choke, because you could have just come and have a good season. So when the man said this to me, I never feel any way bad about it. But my aim was to prove him wrong. Yeah, man, yeah, 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 you know, it, 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 it sounds now weird, you know, but real and true. Well, me take it in now, which me look for it and me look for the positive thing about it because what am I saying? No, it is actually true, yeah, no, everything about it. Because hence the reason why I don't think some of some of our players get the chance to score the hundred as, as much as they should have because they don't get into the habit of scoring it at first class level. Who are you going to do it at a higher level as first class than first class? Yep. When when you go up the center, the, the, as I said, the game of cricket don't play, but you have smarter thinkers up there. So. It's not like first class with them and come and in bowl and he feel like he's tired, so he come off. When you have a team where you bowl or bowl good, he no feel like he can't tire, they nab down the ball. And him at the bank after the team and that give them or get everybody out. You understand? So you don't come and you sit down and you look and say, boy, okay, him scored two fifties on this and him average look good at first class cricket. So yes, he's ready for West Indies cricket. He's a different level of cricket. And if you look around the world, you find that you have more players scoring hundred from different parts than who's scoring it at the level where we play now. Because yes, some of them are playing more cricket than we for longer period. So they get into the habit of playing a lot of cricket. And they get you know that you can play a season at your field, and after your field, you can actually come back and play a make runs. We play some first class season where we played when you feel like you get the Japanese brother, your season done, you know. Like you play two games after you play two games, you feel, and the next man come in. Your season done because of seven games I play nine season. You play five film game and then you have semi-finals and finals. So if you don't make it to finals, you don't play seven games either. Yep. So these are the things we are looking to. Come on, we get we get the reasoning. But West Indians are naturally talented, yeah. I mean, think I, I carry to most over there with, with, the, with the little work where you get when you do because the work where you get when you go at the higher level, yes, you provide the work for you at the highest highest level. At West Indies level, you get the work. I would never tell a man that you don't get the work. The coaches provide that for you. You understand? But at the first class level, I think we can pay more attention to that. We can do some more work on that because players are supposed to get in the habits of doing the good things before they get to the next level. So you transfer, you transfer it from here to the next level. Yeah, man, yeah, now you, you demonstrate the fact that you know the game, you know, basically from a textbook side, plus you know the game in the game itself, physically being on the field, off the field, on the field, you have displayed some positive cricket. And over yeah. the years, you have played a lot of cricket and not just test cricket or just for Jamaica. I want to touch now at least a question over there where you went out and you played for a lot of other, um, whether it be county cricket or, you know, T20 cricket. But you play with um, Jamaica Talawa. You play with the Runa Royals. You play with St. Lucia Zook, Sussex, Somerset, Leicestershire. All of these other um, teams that you have played with. Could you tell us which was your best, your, your best, your favorite team, your best se season with them? <clears throat> um, to be honest with you, I have, I have um, you see, most of the seasons I get into, 
is the amount of cricket that they get to play sometimes, but you, you get around good fellas from different, different parts, yeah? Because in a Mumbai setup, it's like they try to make cricket as easy as possible for you. Yes, it is franchise cricket, people from different nations, and sometimes you might look at it like that is probably some of the hardest cricket to play. When you're playing with people who you don't understand just yet, you have to play with them, you have to train, practice, and all of these things with them, getting to know them, what their cricket is like, or how they go about their preparation, because you don't want to encroach on people's space, or you don't want to you know, rub them on too hard when you're trying to make a team gel together from different, different culture and all of these things. So when you're playing franchise cricket with different, different people, those people are harder to play than when you're playing with Jamaicans or West Indians, because we understand our culture a little bit when you play West Indies cricket, yeah? But playing a yard with Jamaicans, I mean, it's it, it not so hard. Because we know each other like that from, we play some level of cricket together. So when you go in our dressing room again, you see all these people. Or when you go outside now and have to play with different, different people, you know, you know how to chip in and say, look, you're playing somebody from Pakistan, Australia, New Zealand, Sri Lanka. Everything emerged together now. And you have to make that come together and work. So you have to, you have to, you have to suss out people and say, boy, look, you know, that man is like that, you know. That man is like that. So personality, you have to, you have, to have facts about personality first. Because cricket has been said, cricket remains the same. So if you go if you bowl to a man, you can bat. You might go bat. And if you have a bowl, you have a bowl. So you have to check the man's personality. How this man stay? If you can shout for the man and you take it lightly, or you cannot shout to a person. Are you talking to a person, you can make gestures with your hand, or you, you know, just talk. So these are, the, these are the challenges you face when you play with different, different teams. But when it, when it comes to Somerset, I've played at Somerset, which, which um, trust me, that, that, that the things I have at Somerset recently is one that stood out. Um, you feel welcome. The guys that are there is like, you know, Somebody always wants to know something from them. And that is the difference with, 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 with our players in the Caribbean. And I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I would say this to say that because in the Caribbean, we have, you have a lot of young fast bowlers. And sometimes, you know, you, you play for Jamaica, they play for other teams, and some of them wouldn't approach you just to ask you about the knowledge of the game and you would just to pick your, your brain as well to find out. You know, I think you play and you do fairly well over the years. If you can if you can say something to me or uh, whatever the case, how you go about preparation, who you do, you know what I mean? We think, no, we reach when we reach. So I don't think I need input, input from you. Kali Moore could tell you, me never used to make him sleep. You understand me? Always at him, I ask him questions like, go training. We know it's go training and teach training as training at the time. I practice, but practice with purpose. Because I do something I want to find out from him. What do you think? How this look? This man used to take up all him phone and video me. When him now and go back, we sit down and we discuss certain things. You probably are far a little bit, or you probably are deliver with your front knee bend or something like that. Some of these things you have to look for. Because in a cricket, you have to have so many little things you can just straighten out and iron out, and you're all right. Now, like I said, when I play for Somerset, you have fast bowlers who is like this man come to me and say, Boy, look, you know. I go be, I go be like, I go tag with me. So, like, what do you mean by it? Man, say, no, I'm just going to be around you just to ask a few questions and learn whatever, if that is okay. He said, yeah, no problem. I mean, then if me, I play cricket so long, I may have like an understanding about something. I must can't talk to you about it. You understand? My way of doing it might not be the same way of doing it, but just hearing it from somebody and think, okay, the world makes sense, then I can do it my way. You understand? So, yes, it was a bunch of players that they work with. Um, not to say that I don't have players from the Caribbean who approach me you know, and ask me things. But being in a Jamaica setup to play, in, even though I still think I have a lot more can offer, a lot more to give back to Jamaica players, even the first bowlers. Because I even talk to batters as well. Because sometimes you want to know something, you don't have to really ask a bowler because you're a bowler. You can ask batters because I used to ask Chris a lot of questions. Because I used to bowl slow ball to him sometimes. I said, boy, Chris, who you pick the slow ball? And he must say, tell you what, Bobby. You know, so because your ball is slow ball and your ball is full, it's slow through the ear, so I could have waited a little bit longer. If you ball it on the pitch, I might have to keep half of the pitch. And this is how I, I get to have slow ball ball in the pitch and it, it hold up and you go through the time. I couldn't answer ball that because if I answer ball that, what do you tell me? He wouldn't understand what to tell me. So you don't necessarily mean that being a ball, I want to know something you have to ask a ball. You can answer batsman as well. 
if you know what you want to achieve. Boy, Taylor, some powerful reasoning you're yeah, going with. Powerful reasoning. And, you know, that show the knowledge you have of this cricket. You know, and we, we're glad that we get you on the, on the broadcast here. Then tell me, look, I, I haven't played for Jamaica in two years now, right? And I am just at home getting some family time, but I still look at physical activities here and there to keep myself in shape. And even if I think, all right, at the point when I never get to play for Jamaica, because I came back from England, I expressed my interest to the coach, which was Andre Coley at the time, that I would love to play for Jamaica. He said, okay, cool. I came back, there was only one practice game left. And I think I outbowed all the youngsters then. Never get into the one day squad. They said, all right, we're looking for you to play in the four day. When the four day time came around, nobody said anything to me either. So I said, all right, cool, because I know my time is coming to leave. But what I wanted to do, the young fast bowlers, them just want to impart my knowledge and just, you know, kind of see if we can get some of them to get through. Because me even talk to batters when I play. And enough of the batters would have sit down and they listen to me. Because yes, me can look for you, me can tell you something where you're the wrong to because me a bowl. And if me look for me look on the batter, me I look for your fault, I hit me a want. So yes, I can tell you why you are the wrong. I help to correct it. You understand? So yes, you have a couple of us who are seniors that you know some of you have to go for youngsters coming in. But it cannot be all youngsters in our team. You need senior players to so guide the youngsters as well. Well, when you look well, around this... well, no, with, with this, I want to say something um, to the fans here, whoever is watching. Uh, so, you know, Jerome Taylor is ready for cricket. Jerome Taylor have the knowledge and experience. And even as Melvin on the side is saying, if you have approached um, Jamaica about coaching, but I'm not going to go down there as yet. Because really and truly, you have made yourself to let them know that, guess what, Jerome Taylor is ready. Jerome Taylor is fit. Jerome Taylor is ready for cricket, for Jamaica. And I know... You can't make it back into the West Indies. The West Indies is still searching for bowler. We have not seen the consistency with well, West Indies bowling. So, me, tell you, I am not sure about West Indies cricket because I am not sure how I did. How... Yes, I had retired from West Indies cricket, yeah? But I came out of retirement and everybody accepted the fact that I came back. It was good news to them. But I only went to England to replace San Diego since. And from that, I never played for West Indies. Yes, I know... At the time when I retired, I probably leave bitter tears in a people mouth, and I think some personal things happened back there, which a decision was taken, and if I decide to retire and come out of retirement, I don't think you should hold it over my head. Because you don't know why, but we have a reason why I do it. You understand? But it is what it is, and I'm not somebody who always comes and the media to talk about decisions made by selectors and whoever. Because nobody has the God given right to play at any given time. You understand? But while you're able and you still can play, and if you're a senior player, so to speak, me think you should be given the opportunity. I have worked very hard to build my career playing for Jamaica and West Indies. <laughs> and the way I think I was treated, I don't think it was nice, but me never really make me nice about it. Like you see no. other players who never play and make a lot of nice about it. This and that. No, we just take it as it is because I know some people play the game and never play again. I was privileged to play for a while. You understand? Well, so let, we never really come out and make the nice about it. Well, let, let me say something, Jerome. You don't need to make any nice because uh, we all know what you can do. You know, now I know a lot of the viewers didn't even know that you had come back ready, fit, and make yourself available, especially we take it at Jamaica level. Jamaica, uh, all right. I have always been available. You know. well, Jamaica, I have always been available. Well, that's it. No people don't know that. You know, and inside, I know if they know that, they, they would have they, they would join you and they would talk up about this. Definitely. Because here, we, you are our best cricketer, you are our best bowler. And just talking to you, I know the program where you go to, just going to states, you have the knowledge already, the background, the groundwork, the root. You understand? And with your experience, you're not just playing for Jamaica, you play for the West Indies. You have played against the best batsman in the entire world. You know, and you have proven yourself that guess what? You're one of the best bowler we have seen in you know, the latter stage after Walsh and Ambrose series. You know, but for you to be available now and we not see up on the scene, boy, that I gonna make me ask some question. You know, and you probably ask yourself the same question too. <laughs> well, let me say, well, them say it, you know, and um them them put that thing. 
the five top fast bowlers for, for, for Jamaica. Well, and I'm, I'm in the five. So we don't know whether somebody do it because them things are but I'm in the five. So, 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 I, I got ask you a question now, straight up. And, you know, I don't want to call any name or anything, but have you, do you believe politics have affected cricket likewise any other sports? Look, like mostly Caribbean. But, 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 I'll be, let me say, in, in any sport, well, unless it is individual sport, and there, there's politics everywhere. Because, like me say, I'm living in a country and it is run by politics. So, why do you think there wouldn't be politics in sport? But one of the things that I would say to is that if you're in an organization, right, whether you have the management, you have the players, you have administration, the organization, it needs all parties to come together, you know. And yes, you and I are in an organization. We are stakeholders now. What I'm saying to you is that I cannot be a case where I said something and then you take offense to it and then you use it against me. We are entitled to opinions and we have the right to use them. And if I don't use it in a disrespectful way to you, not to discriminate your job description or title, then I don't see why something should be held against somebody else. If I am in a situation or in a team and I cannot speak how I feel, then how would you know if I'm learning something? But most teams I realize now, the minute the player starts to become a senior player and figure that him have more authority, and they want to ask certain questions, you think, okay, let me get rid of this player because it looks like you will make trouble. Now, if you know, you know. And if you don't know, you don't know. It shouldn't be a case where you have to put somebody else at a disposal because it looks like him can challenge certain things you have to do. So he's no longer good. If this player can play, keep the player, play with the player, be with the player, and the player, play play assist. You can't throw the player because, okay, this man looks like he will challenge me and me know nobody who when me say something they really like one, ask me a question or this and that. No, I'm not saying go. I'm going to ask a question and say, if you can't answer it, that simply means you don't know. And that, is, and that is understandable. But you can't be in a setup and then certain things you want to ask and you have to keep it. When you could have asked it and you could have helped other players too, because let me tell you the truth. I was an advocate for players when me I play. Not because I come from Deep Rural St. Elizabeth and I play for Jamaica. Sometimes we didn't, if we see certain things, and I like more and disrespect a man, but I'm going to say, boy, but this is not right. You understand? I'm probably a part and part of why I'm where I'm at right now. But if me did my, my own business, probably me still a play. But my heart just can't allow me to do it. Me not going to disrespect no man if you're a youngster neither, because if you're coming as a youngster, you must be a dude. But there's no way me can be an international player and if me go and me play. You treat me like, me not say, if you put me, no way way part the next player I couldn't do anything. But you want to treat me as if me just have me dead you, like the youngster who I come. All of you are going to make the teammates and all of you are going to play for the same team. But well, you have to understand that man, I put in America already. So let me see what you can do. If I fitness, me not tell you, say, boy, because the youngster come in, the youngster must do fitness and the senior man not do fitness. I'll have to go to fitness because the team requires that. But there are certain ways, there are certain ways you treat a senior player when it comes to certain things. You don't treat a junior player like that. If you look on the criteria of make a team, tamo. And if you say, boy, all right, my selector, the junior player come in and he make 30. My senior player make 40, and my senior player make 30. And you'll give the junior player the nod over the senior player. What you tell me? The experience gone to the winner, then you know. Yep. Because a senior, a senior player with experience and a 30 is better than a junior player with a 30. You don't know if you can get a good delivery or a bad delivery, what would have happened? You see, the, uh, me, me, Brown, I've just said it right there. You have so much to offer, so, more, so much more to give. And really, this but is sad news for me. Do, all I wanted to do was to give back. Because I realized that I was a leader of West Indies at one point in the bowling department. And most of my junior bowlers, they, they, they never have no fear to come to me and ask me questions. And I am almost willing to give them. Whatever you need to know that you ask me. Because somebody, somebody had taught me along the line, too. So me must can give back. I don't worry about me telling you something and then you might end up counting better than me. Then what the team want? Me are you supposed to, if, if you throw away, I play. And if I am that good, and you come, are you better than me? Then the team not worry. The team can't worry, you know? So you find that some players, when they feel inferior to somebody else, they withheld information, they wouldn't tell the other player. And that's not what the team want. The team want people who can share information. So me feed off of you, you feed off of me. 
You understand? I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut you right there one minute because I see Omira and put this in, in the message <clears throat> that when he was in the 90s, he might go back. We are 1996. So we see say politics gone back from we them days there. Omira went to trial, got the most wicked in trial. He was there with Chris Gale. Opening with Chris Gale in trial to them trying for years. And the man Chris Gale had gone it to so make some runs. Get the most wicked. And basically he was returned back to St. Elizabeth as a reserve. All right. Mm -hmm. I watch it again, Ricardo Powell. He within the same time, 95 around there. Ricardo Powell went to trials, score century, half century. Basically the most runs. And he was returned back to Manchester. It was the next year that he got really picked in the Jamaica youth team. You know, so I have seen where politics have affected the level of cricket in Jamaica and really have broken a lot of high-spirited cricketers, you know, the the, the whole mindset because Omira trust me play cricket together from states a good cricketer but since that time head back a century say yo man I go back at town because like you go then you waste time you know it was a politics in countryman versus town man too there was so much things going on and who know who and all that and we have realized that that still have spread over into our international cricket if you don't know that yeah. man there if you don't cling with a man there you know cling with a captain there if you're just against anything that the captain may say you may just mm -hmm. find yourself <laughs> out of the team. And I don't think that is, is good for cricket in any way, form or fashion. No, especially a man like you, with the level of experience where you have, there's so much for Jamaica to gain, you know, from your well, experience, plus a young player. Well, Tal Talby, let me say this. Um, you know, it have myself, it have Nikita Miller. And I don't think it was a coincidence why we were roomies either, you know. Um, they have burnt and parchment as well, who have known from from this side. Because, I mean, you know, when you come from the rural parts, most people from this side don't really ask questions. But we were never short of asking a question if we need to know something. And if you're going to answer it, yeah, you best give us something good because we're going to make you know. So, look, you know, feel comfortable when you tell me. If you know otherwise, don't just give me something full because I know different. So, these are the things that people don't like. I don't think it's wrong if somebody somebody would, would, would oppose you or, or, or something once they have a valid reason. Nothing not wrong with that. Somebody obviously something you say with a valid reason. Nothing not wrong with that. So not because well, you are the, you know you you, you, you you can't be the coach and if a player object to something what you say, but him have a valid reason why I'm object to it. Mark, you know, he's not changing your state. And nothing you know, but him just object because he might tell you what him feel or how he think. He now say, "Boy, you must do me think or how me feel." I cannot think like you know, but look how you put it across like that I must digest it and I have something what me want to say and me can't say it to you. That can't be right. So and Jerome, be right. <laughs> yeah, I want I want to hear something right now. So right now, Jerome Taylor is fit and ready. If them say yo. Come trials tomorrow, man. You're ready to pack your bag and go to Kingston. Then tell me you come trials tomorrow, Mr. Drive on tonight. Ah, <laughs> boy. You hear me? Me glad me hear that personally from you. Because right now, as you you know, the comments them just keep rolling in, you know. From from yeah, from, right. from the people that we are watching, you know, and, and, and really and truly them they you know good because in at a one man thing I say certain things, it's many of our cricketers have seen this politics. Me kept, me kept quiet for the two years and, and interviews come here and there to do and me just, me just never do nothing because you know me know people going to ask some questions and me know have to go out there and like, like a vent me a vent about something you understand so me not have to do it and me not have to talk but I don't think I was treated fairly to be honest with you and I don't think it is from a selection point of view I think it is more than that because when I look at the last 50 over child I went to, me bowl 8 over straight on the chat. And all of the young fast bowlers in the none of them ever managed 4 and 5 straight. You understand? I mean, Jeremy Blackwood was the captain for my team at the time. And every time, to hold me a bowl, every time he come to me, you can't manage one I'm a big man. If you give me the ball, I'm going to bowl. You can't manage. How long you know me? How long you see me play cricket for? When me come to cricket, I cricket me come to play. Me not come to come Gulliver and then, you know show. Any show me I get up on the pitch. You understand? I work time for me. When I cook time, I work time. 
And that's just me. So I actually bowl eight overs straight. I come off. A youngster go on and I go back and go bowl two and out the next man. And that's that. So when I get the call, so boy, I was never into the 50 over squad. I was a bit shocked. But I say, all right, I understand. That's OK. Then the chairman tell me, say, all right, we are considering for the, for the fifth, for the, for the fourth year cricket. When fourth year time come in again at night? Mm. You understand? Mm. So, it's all right, cool. <laughs> so, like, you tell me, say, four day time come, maybe, me, 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 you know, I like me for four day. How many time come in again? You know? That means I tell me, say, look past. We are going to move past, you know. Me oh. never call on your phone and, and I have some argument about this and that. You know what I mean? I try to, you know, if you don't invite me, then I can't turn up. Yo, this is sad. Me, me, I'm going to tell you, this is sad. This is sad for Jamaica cricket. This is sad for Caribbean cricket. This is sad for West Indies cricket. Because if a man has a a man, because probably some personal issues are, you just, because a man talk up, which we have the right. We have the right to say something. If something not look good, you say something. And me, me like it, I, I, I'm Thompson um, thing here. He said, blood, you must talk. Truth is truth. You wasn't. You know, if they don't okay. treat you right. I want thing me know in the boss. And I tell him on this. Here's certain things that go with me. And it's gonna stay with me. Like me tell me come from dear Pearl and Saint Elizabeth. I don't think I was favored while me play for Jamaica and I was in this. Me think it have to work my ass after that. You understand? So working my way to the top, reach to the top, and if a man feel like okay, this man here, XYZ, I'm a come from country, so me can be cheated anyway. That's all right. Like me tell you, me still I go ask questions, and I want thing me know me not lose my sanity. So nobody feel like I push me around and I never ask questions. No, never ask. So I mean, if you ask. Because uh, if there's something... No, yo, comment that come in like... The if there's something for me, and it's not going to allow me to play it properly. So if I walk around with this and the performance is that deep, you say, boy, this man not perform. So jump. I suck my body, I don't really performance, you know. And if me think me need to ask, to clear my head. Then I go ask it. Just simple as that. All right. Jerome, let me tell you something. The people them love you. The cricketer them love you. The man them miss you out of the cricket. And may I just run across some comments because we can't show all of the comments with the man in the funny side. Not yeah. one man will say, yo, Jerome will really like you as a cricketer. So just read, most, just read that. Most, most of the players will be with. Most of the just players will be playing. For Jamaica, love and respect me because I'm not really going about it like that. I just tell them on the truth. If I see two men go on, I eat that not team and I have to tell you, say, boy, look, I know we are doing all right. They got to tell you the truth. You know what I mean? So I take that side, you know. You just tell them, I have to tell you. Yeah, man. So I run through some comments. Just look across and read as quick as possible. The man then just a comment as we are go through. And really and truly, as some serious comment, them thing. Yeah. But I also run them as we go across. So just take a minute, take a break, a water break, and read what the man them say quickly. I see somebody, you know, but you see somebody question them ask, you can ask me if I next man I play over me in the basket. Look at all that we are playing. You know? So a man, I'll get pick ahead of a man. And nothing wrong with that. You have to understand that sometimes you have selectors and captains that overcome and feast about the combination is the best combination. Then then choose a the combination there. So there are certain things when me will see when I don't really touch because I don't want to ask me why the man they are playing over me. The man couldn't pick himself. That's all I have to say. You think what I say? Cause, because see? if you don't pick yourself, a man pick you, then home if you go ask the man how I play with me. No, that's not right to me ask the man. And me know, me know, the things that I don't really get into, we just deal with general stuff. We don't deal with some of the, the little yeah, 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 You know yeah. what I mean? Definitely. Yeah. You know, you what? Know, uh, go in a trade them water. They're dangerous water. But you know, there are some comments out there. So. The man said, Jamaica needs someone like you. We know that. Let me see that. Need, Neil McLeish, we can answer for your question already. The man said, would you go back? No, if you, you, you get a car, you already say you pack your bag tonight and you start driving. We know that. So, I answer answer them as you go. The man said, hurt players ball about nastiness in it. We all know that. Derek Brown, true talk. You know, say I talk the truth. Steve Powell, another statesman, yeah, so, he said, God bless you. Neil McLeish, Jamaica is short of experience. We all know that. So if man like you ready, I want to go back to Jamaica and man I'm a hold you. No, we don't, we don't, we don't want to want it. You see, well, we are best make 164 for the West Indies and didn't play a next game. <laughs> man said, Garden, 
Yes, brother, something's best to leave and said. Well, we know that too. Javan again. Why the man ever you know, tell me I will say it. If me talk, yeah. and you must talk yeah, man. too. Because yeah, you... most of the man they know me as a trainer, man. That's the man they see the trainer. Because of the end idea. Some of the man then get some little some little deals of me see happen a cricket sometimes. You know what I mean? Because they can't play. You understand? Sometimes, you know, you will see a man and you know, him, him, him did it, but he not did anything. And only if you could have talked to him sometimes, you know, probably a change certain way, change certain things for him. Because it looks like, it's like when you come from far, you reach all the settings and sometimes, you know, certain things will happen in your face, boy, you know, we come as a, but he deserves an equal chance and you know, get it, that's a boy, Jaja. You know, I'm going to go with me, you know. But at the end of the day, I just say, go, Thank you, tell us everyone to live and everything that we're going here. Now I'm going to fall for your plate all the Alright. You know that. I have asked you some quick question now. A lot of cricket are going in the USA. We play a US Open, which at that time last week, we said Fidel before he get called back. Because, you know, when they come up, we kind of help around the cricket. We see Fidel Edwards, we yeah, play together. Fidel come, never bowl the best spell in the um, US Open. But yet still, ah, Fidel is back in the West Indies. You know, you are, you are just 37. I know you and Fidel probably are rub shoulder to shoulder in terms of age. So that show yeah. your age now have nothing to do with it. Is your fitness and if your readiness, you're ready. Which is true, which is true, which is true. Yeah, Fidel is back there right now. So definitely, if you're ready, we say give you a chance, boss. Now hold your back. We, we, we want to see you. May I tell you that, right? Well, you need to see, as long as you perform by the trial. Cricket and play in the US, me open for come play some cricket, man. I ask a man. Yeah, yeah, me. Well, me, I'll tell you straight up. A lot of things are going for cricket in the US minor league. And anybody I watch, anyway, over the world, Jerome Taylor, ready for cricket. The man, them just a, a, a style for the, 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 the experience. Because we want, we, we know you as a cricketer, we know you can do already. So it's the Mongol style for the experience, which can't be you, good for nobody. I'm at home at one, one time, you know, and me actually, me actually, the king's son, I'm here, man. A man that, a very prominent man, too. But sometimes they get a little bit low down here. I mean, look around because I want to see who it come from. Man, so where am I going? I see him done, you know, I'm too old. But then figure say, and the old me old, you know, I too old long me the board because I start too young. So it's like, they must say, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you know, you get that right there. Right? 18 years you play for West Indies, not 18. Yes, so at the time, at the time, when the man tell me, say, me old, you know, you know, say, I'm now, about 33, 34, you know. So I say, no, man, I told me that too long, make a piece of me old man. I think it's a mistake, young man. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, big up, big up. If you know Wallaby, if you are Wallaby, did you have to stay? What do you mean? You mean if you know Wallaby, man, I have to say. I'm a gentleman, I'm with you, I'm with you, I'm with you, I'm with you, I'm with Wallaby, big up yourself. Real state's you. And I'm like, I'm like the movements. Go for it. No respect, man. Yeah, man. You know, Neil McLeish, big up yourself. You know. Really and truly, um, Jerome, the, 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 the cricketer, the real cricketer, the man who know cricket, the man who have experience, we, we know who miss when, 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 when you're not in the game right now. And if you know that you're ready for the game, and you're not in the game, it really, personally, it hurt me. Because I can't believe it that you, you're in a readiness, fitness readiness, and a man who hold you back with your experience, your knowledge. Because you just talking and hearing you know, some things where you say enough people that you know that I never play cricket for years. <laughs> and not a joke. Well, that's what I tell you. You see, when it comes to cricket or uh, any farmer's sport, I will tell you this. Uh, if a person can house still a perform, I can't tell you one thing that I always listen to when it is time to leave. And uh, your body. Your body never lie to you. Your body tell you when it is enough. When, when enough is enough. Yo, see where Carl, Carl, Carl Briggs say so. Respect Carl Briggs. I believe that Mr. Taylor is better than a lot of who is playing at the present moment. Me, hands up with that. Me no business. Me go call no name or anything, but that is hands up for me. Right? Why, Mr. Briggs, me understand what you're saying about um, enough people still letting things on but at the end of the day, opinion is still an opinion and you're entitled to it. You understand? Like me tell you, being in the system, if you're weak, you never have it because a lot of people have a lot of things to say. Some have good, some have something that is 
downgrading and all of these things. But you have to know that the individual say, boy, you have to rise above, you know? That's all the thing go. You can't just make because a man says something about you, you feel like you must drop dead and fall up and cool up. No, no, man. There were two champions made up. You know, let me tell you, my school, you know, work and integrity, you know, man. So once you have two champions is made of work and integrity, man, I hard work. Me hear you, but me not hear you, you know. And I want to when me hear you talk some negative things about me. My aim is just to shut you up. I mean, I shut you up with target. Just shut you up with the feet and the feet. Like that, me do. You know, no. I hear me come and talk to the man and talk to the man about this and that. Yeah, tell me yes. something. I tell me going to work. I do something. Let me take back that. You see where, you see where Steve's power is a real talk. This is what we yeah. call real talk, just as it is. Why, one bad man we have out there, you know, I thought I'm saying, but he, he want to take on everybody else. <laughs> 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 Yo, why, you look like the man them start coming. Yo, Yo my boss, I wish green attack. Maurice Green. Maurice Green, yeah. check out that man. I wish green attack. Maurice Green. I don't know, I know. Well, what that okay. after year? <laughs> well, we have a good time, sir. Come on, you know, 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 you Sad, 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 sad. Yeah, yeah don't cricket the player. You have to play don't cricket the player. I can't remember. Well, well Mr. Buck now say, you know. I have a year, Mr. Buck now say, you know. Yo, but uh, all the matter about the 100, you make come here, so you make all the 100, and Buck now say, yo, you're a batsman, turn bowler. I don't know if I make no 100, I'm a batsman. I'm a bowler, I make 100 balls. All right, you're you, you the man, say. There you are, Brown. Mr. Brown said, please, boss, come back. King, we need you to come back. Taylor, no one playing for the West Indies now is good as you and I. Don't say that. So don't say come back. Come back. Play some cricket in the US. Anyway, I, I, mean what, I mean what, I mean what, you've started with the Jamaica West Indies, but as you say, you're open for the US, you're open for anyway, right now. Because you're fit. Okay, the West Indies, West Indies man, and that's my father, man. Let me tell you, you know. Anytime <laughs> you feel so you can talk to some people and you ask them some questions and you know hide from nobody, then them things say you get too big for the game. So this is some man fan to with them wife and man see big man for the boy that man I run your man. Man even want the man them see them so make them talk. A big man in the being your wife, you know, man. <laughs> you know, I have a girlfriend in the boss, man. I have a man with wife and pick it. I'm on a duck and a hide currency, man. And I said, no, no, man. One thing I go to school, JB, tell me, say, no, man, no, more, no, man. Everybody stand up and pants. So one foot after the other. Yep. So I hide from you, man. Why? At the same time, I want to big up Mr. Bowes. You know, you know Bowes. Downs, man, Mr. <laughs> Bowes. Byron. <laughs> By Byron's a coach, <laughs> man. I always get fight. Well, that's true, that Byron. That's true, too. When you right. get right in, you know, you fight back, man. But, but I mean, I know, you, you must know this, man, yeah. Robertson. Man, yo. say who that? Star Trek. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I saw boss go on, man. That any day. That any day, he gives him. Yeah, man, a boss, man. He gives him for all your school, you know. Okay. <laughs> Remember Star Trek movie used to come on with, 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 what, what do you call it? Wolf, yeah, uh, man, eh? Yeah, man, yeah, man. over it. <laughs> Big up yourself, Mr. Robertson. <laughs> I'm an school captain, you know. Captain, me, you know. What? What? Captain, I'm an school cricket, man. Why, why, why the man is full of comment over here, sir, boss? I'm not telling you lie. The man miss you. The man say, you came out of the road. That's out of the pier. The man is a road. He's a good carry on the road. He's a good well to you know. In, yeah, you have some good youngsters. You have some good youngsters that come through now, man. So, the must go on. And what I think is, to, you know, let me say this. And 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 what I think, what, what, what I think affect the cricket sometimes, somewhat. It's like you find a youngster, you try to make goal out of the youngster. When, like me say, we have little or no cricket to play. If this, if these people that play more first class cricket, then they would have been more consistent. Maybe. 
You understand so because they don't have enough first class cricket. You have to give them enough games up to sit up so they can come. You can't give them two games and then fail and you dash them with it. Next time you get a game, you may go personal. So you must say, boy, is that I have to go back to make sure to myself when the team actually ask him to be look a bit more. Or you know, go bold to get so wicked for yourself. When the team couldn't say, boy, look at no try that you work with this academy and look like he's not gonna do it. But I must say, boy, if I look for myself now, I don't get a nice game, so it's like I'm gonna have to play for your game. You have to get young, so I'll be sure I'll say, boy, look here, all right. You know, so you're young, you know. So you go on. I get a full series, yeah. So you take some pressure off a female already. You're going to play, man. Just know what you said. Just go and go play. Like me tell you when Lara told the body, you say, you're just born. You never tell me what you do. So me just know, say, all right. I'm going to bowl one good line and then. The ball go in and you go out. Because sometimes you ask the ball to do something, the ball and do it, you know. You better do it, you you must have a time to have a deal when you feel look at the outside of my ball and the ball last week. You just want broke going, so you better work with that. So here what you do, you start out that instrument at the outside, you have something to make you finish on the stump. But I start the panic stump and feel the goal. So not going. All right. As you speak, Jerome, I know we have you for a long time, but this feel like we just we just sit on a chat and have a beer. We just sorry, so I don't have a glass here. But see a new man. <laughs> Another junior Logan giant 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 on here. You know, we just I said boy, respect for the man and we are giant, respect for the man and we are coming, respect one the man and share this video at the end of it too. But the man I'm a giant on Jerome and they must say some positive things. Cause even this, having you around to mentor Oshie and Thomas and Odian Simit would do a wealth of good for them. Jamaica and the West Indies. That's why you need to come back and give two more years imparting your knowledge. And me put tie this in a question when Melvin did ask, we up if you ever try to be yeah about the coaching, if you ever approach them. The question, you see the question, yeah. but I never I never I never approach them. But you see, like I say, I always want to want, want to go back in and, 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 and help out. But my thing is now for that you don't have to ask permission. And you don't, like me say you just can't run in for a man thing. You know, you have a head coach, you have an assistant coach. And basically, I mean, you know, the assistant coaches as a fast bowler. So, you know, one time I feel like you are coming for anything when I already have somebody who can fill the void. You understand? So now, if me take up myself and go, even though the assistant coach I'm a good, good friend, that the man there, me and him sit and chat cricket every day, any day. We pick each other brain, we talk about cricket and that's that. You understand? But like me, I say, you're not just running for a man. Thing. Yes, you used to play, you used to be there, but you're not there anymore. So, you have to give the people who who are entrusted with the job to do their job. Well, I respect the way you're talking, because you talk from a place of openness and no biasness. You know? Yeah. You, 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 and I think probably that's your problem, too, you know, Jerome. Probably, you see, sometimes you say, you're too, you're too good. Tell you hurt yourself. Cause, you know, well, you see, you see, if that's the way I hurt myself, at least me know me feel good with myself knowing that. You know, I that's not to do it. Yeah, and if you better with myself, you know, and say that is how it is. I mean that. I mean that. That's some some function too. You know. Yeah. Sometimes you just leave certain things and and make you see. But may I, may I say something? And with coaching, I've talked to somebody where you where, where you know somebody where you play with. Man, we have the highest level of coaching. Man, say you go to Jamaica and him try getting at the program and probably there for a little bit. Don't call no name, but you will know who me talk. And yet still. It not look like the man will welcome him certain way because he come like, yeah, come in, come step on certain things or come take my bread or something. I never hear that. Go back again. Go back again. I never hear that. No, I say, you have a bread drink where you play with. Yeah. And go back to Jamaica and try in the coaching. How the highest level of coaching degree. So, and I like him to qualify. Give yeah. the assistant to the youth. Then. But later on, it seems like people within within the organization feel like, you know, he might come take up them bread or something. So, yeah. yet still him want to give back uh, impart to the country, but really and truly because of these individual, you know, you, you feel guilty about it and you don't feel welcome. <clears throat> yeah, me understand, you know. Me know a woman, me understand. And I mean, general, let me tell you the truth. You see, you see, I want to tell you, you see the ones who are willing to do it, they're not going to take some of them because some of the people who are very strong, you know, think they want. They want. They want the people who work with whatever they are saying and just do whatever they say. You understand? But like, like I tell you, start. If you're going to give a man a job, 
and you have to micromanage him. That means the man is not ready for the job. Once me give a job, do your job. After you, after you, after you, after your year of the work, don't have me go for your assess me, assess and see what you're there. If you're not ready, then me gonna tell you, so look, never terminate, I'm gonna do something different. But it is pointless to you, it is pointless to go and give me a job after you give me the job. You micromanage me, may I do what you want me to do. But when you're done and you assess, you still a reach your region, you're gonna fire me. That doesn't make sense to me. Fire me, I do my thing. So that's why I always tell them as quick it that. You go play, go with your gut feeling sometimes. No matter make you captain tell you this or your coach tell you sometimes and you still have a jack you. Jack me, I do me, I do. I fire me, I do me, no, if you do. Boy, you know, at this point, when we talk about coaching, I want to give a shout out to Nikita Miller again, wherever I'm there, you know. We know that yeah. Nikita Miller, working assistant coach, doing yeah. Amazing job out there, but you know, even with Killer Miller over 500 wickets, we don't want to see my Jamaica do that. You understand? <laughs> yeah, but, um, for what I get a killer, I don't think he's the assistant coach anymore. You know, what? Uh, see that nothing, no, I go on there, so no, I don't think he's the assistant coach anymore. So, I think hey, it's yeah, I know this is an interview, but but to me, it feels it feel like a chat, just we are reason. So, if we are mm -hmm. running at your time, you know. I say, even though it's a, like an interview, to me, it's a chat. So if we are running yeah. out of time, I have to cut and come back another season. It's fine. No? But if you are all right, well, we may just go to a few more questions and done it. But what, when you think we could have come back, you can't really have something, man. What time are you talking about? No, man. Well, next year, man. Next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Whenever, whenever. No, no, wrong, man. You tell me you have a number, no, man. So if, if there's any time... You know, so once me can come in and me can talk, me not, me not have a problem. You know what I mean? No, mm -hmm. Realize that a lot of people are coming and we don't want to keep you outside of your bed, bed hours. So, in no, final... Man, me not going to go find bed hours yet, man. Okay. Well, guess what? Okay. Bef before we go any further, I want you to just, for a youngster, we want to get himself in the cricket or have the talent, you know, and, and love the game. What would be your message to, to, to a youngster right now? With given everything we are happening at cricket. <clears throat> well, never use a word. Commitment. You understand? Any youngster who want to play this thing, you have to commit yourself to it. And when I say commitment, that's why I break it down. You see, if you commit yourself to this, no matter what the situation, you're going to find yourself to the cricket field. The adverse condition, you go and get the training, you go and do it. So you have to commit yourself to it at all costs. You understand? Because the work you are put in, trust me, it wouldn't and it go unseen. You all get it just for one. Tell me, I tell you that. You understand? So if a young someone break it, just commit yourself to the cricket, man, and put in the work. You understand? Because remember saying that the, most of the great cricketers never start. With flair and start being the best. I work with them put in over time so they start to appreciate the work more. The more they look like they might get better, the more they want to work. I used to look for Lara, Lara came back, I used to look for Shiv, Shiv came back. When you come at change, you don't know Shiv. A man don't have much runs. This man just love back. This man commit himself to knocking balls. So every day you see him, if he can get a if he can get a dog, he can throw a ball to him, he's still gonna knock some balls. Why? Before you go, as you mentioned, Shiv Narayan Chandra Paul, the other day I commented on a, on a, on a game, you know, because he's here in the minor league. Actually, I think he's the coach for a team, particular team. And I yes. watch, I watch his son. He not have that stand like um, Shiv, but he have every shot that Shiv Narayan have. He make a good yeah, safety man. and he make a Actually, good safety. Watch the two man, we play against the two man and the two man are bad, yeah? <laughs> Well, I, tell you, I think this man meant to his son, man. The two men are bad. And the little man play a shot. And the man walk from the field and go down to him. I don't know what he tell him, you know. But when the man come back up, you know, bad. The man put back his son in a prom time and not play no shot or anything, you know. Yeah, man. So it's just the mentality. It's like, man, I tell him, look, too early for you to play the shot there. You know, son, but, but, but. Yeah, the man, they wear down ball of us. They wear down till when you're ready for him to take you. No, man, really and truly, 
he's maintained that that youth really good because I, I watch him and the man look clean. I don't know what if he's in the way. I mean, I know if he's in the West Indies or I'm here in the US, but that you the I think he might go far with him cricket. Well, him play, him play, him play first class with you, so. Okay. Pass through, you know. You dream string some in together. Like me tell you, you come, you come and you get a good season. Maybe, maybe some people localize different from some player, man, guys. I've, I've seen players who, who out shine players and they never get the nut neither. But if, if the criteria for selection, for selection is not clear to everybody, then I want to pick somebody I don't even know on what basis he was selected, so. You still can't question that. And like me say, this is one of the, this is one of the things that we never get involved with. I never try to find out how a man gets selected, guys. That's another my thing. If me I play, me I play. So you pick a man on my business that the man go and play too. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Me never, never, me never want who as a boy look at the man that shouldn't get picked or you should get picked over the man there. Whilst I am a player. If me in a thing I never play, who you pick? And then I have to go rip it. So I just say go. You might feel away when you know, see other man that get picked back. I think him have what it takes to be a part of it. But like me say, I feel them combination them are good. No, All fine. right. Quick, quick question again, um, Taylor, because you know with your experience, your knowledge, and everything, um, could you tell us some of the things that you'd like to see in this administration, whether the Jamaican administration or the or the West Indian administration, when it regards to players, how do you expect them to treat you? Why you don't want to see some difference inside it? Hmm. Why tell me? You know, see me not touch a bank like that. I'm just not there now. But but the thing is with that still, you know, you know, administration function. Them them know them role, man. So I mean, yeah, we just do what you have to do. You you are there. You are you are the off the field support for the players them. So. You do your role as best as you can because the players are going to have to do everything to make the administrator, the administrators look good and let the board look good. So, you know, if you just make the players them feel good and look good just the same. You understand? So, these are the small little things, but you know, you're not going to get in depth with it. They know the role. So, don't just take up the job and then you're not playing a role. Then you're going to mess up somewhere. Some, something will get messed up so it's not going to be good. Why, right, Taylor? I can tell you one thing. I am very happy. I'm pleased that you, you know, take up the invite to come on the program tonight because really have imparted a lot of knowledge here. You have been a, a real role model for, for a lot of youngsters, even seniors, yeah. we, you know, look up to you in terms of your discipline and everything, you know, that the way you, the way you carry yourself, I just said, find your dear states, you're the neatest man, you know, you have, you have carried the West Indies flag high from my standpoint, my viewpoint, you know. And really and truly, we're proud of you. And no matter what may happen down the road, you have done what you have done for the West Indies. You have done what you have done for Jamaica and the Caribbean at large. And we really hold them, them, them performance high, especially for a young youth like you coming into the team. At 18 years old, we know that take a lot of responsibility. It could be a lot of pressure that come with it. But you, you, you will tell that storm and you stand tall, other than the injuries and so forth, you know, really... Mm. Lo love it all, and you know, if you also yeah, can go ahead. Because I have the opportunity, we just take it for several. Then I am, I am very privileged to be honest. Um, to be, to be, to be given the opportunity. You know, I am privileged and I am honored. And and like I said, I went out there to represent the, the how much of a million people, and not just them, because even my family as well, you know, I think I've done I've done pretty well to let them feel good within, within themselves. So the opportunity was much appreciated, um, given by Jamaica and the West Indies to really go out and, and, and represent the people them. Yeah, man. So you know, respect. Thank you for being here. And together we rise, building our nation. And it's always a platform that you're welcome. You know, it's really just to impart knowledge to people really to just inspire, uplift, and motivate. This is what the platform is for. And we are glad that you did. Yeah, yeah, man. And, and don't be, don't feel away, man. I'm just a phone call of you. So anytime, just let me know. And like me say, if I can feel a void, feel it up in a slot, I am more than welcome to do it, man. Yeah, man. And this is a final comment from uh, Steve Powell. Man, real real big man. Real Stets, die-hearted Stets fan. 
And the man said, your entire state's family love and respect you, my brother. We thank you so much to represent us with class and integrity. All right, Sir P. You love yourself, man. <laughs> I could not say that better, sir. And, and, and here, the, the final closing, Melvin said, good chat. Enjoy it. May yeah, that too. <laughs> so boss, we're gonna let you go to all the fans and the followers and everybody that joined in to the, tonight. I just wanna say thank you guys. You know, we really appreciate the comments that come in, and we still can't be able to go back to Facebook and look at some of these comments, and we can answer some of the question that wasn't touched on. And as Jerome said, he's just a phone call away. So later on, we may have him back on the program. You know, later on we may see him back in the Jamaican colors again, which we all would love to see that. You know, and even more the West Indies scholars. But either way, if he even don't go back playing on the field, we want to see him at least be able to impart the knowledge and the wealth of experience that he have gained through his cricketing career. You know, is a man from his words. We know that he knows the cricket. He knows it to a T. And it is someone we don't want to have him last in the system. Not when he has so much to give. So. In whatever way, if somebody's out there and viewing the program again, just remember that the man is fit and ready for cricket. So if we have a big contract, you know, may have to contact us. <laughs> but I, just kidding, the man ready for cricket. Put it that way. Local, <laughs> international, wherever, the man fit and ready. Jerome Taylor, respect my brethren. We peace out. Facebook fans later on. All right, I'm respect.